Kitchen. Uh, Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Steve's a bit quiet, he's got a bit of a sore throat. Oh, a bit of a sore throat. Murder. All week. It's been murder, Rick. It's, we couldn't work all this week, um, no, because, been uh, sick. Steve's been in Brist- Carl, you're not impressed. It's just- I, I don't understand why having a sore throat oh, sort of- Go, oh, he's done you. Right, what if the sore throat was so painful it was like you've got broken glass and razor blades in your throat? You can hear now that I'm not even speaking from down in the throat, I'm speaking from the very top of it like that, so it sounds a bit weird. But you're right. What? Y your hands are alright, aren't they? Yeah, but we talk when we're writing, don't we? I can barely talk. It was in mur it was mm. agony. I couldn't sleep because it was so painful. Even when I was just lying there, motionless, it was hurting. I, I just was surprised because we got back off holiday and, uh, called Ricky and said, alright, is Steve alright? And he said, uh, oh, he's, he's had to go back home or something and he's stayed there because he's, he's got a sore throat. Yeah. I didn't understand why you can't, like, just go home. I mean, you, you, how old are you? What? I don't understand why you got to be at your mum and dad's when you when you feel. I happen to be at my mum and dad's. My mum and dad's. Now I'm talking like you. When when this this sore throat mm. really kicked in, so I thought I might as well stay and get a bit of the creature comforts of home. Do you know what I pictured there when when he told me? See, my parents aren't like yours, Carl. Your your father would have popped down to the phone box and maybe looked to see if there were any kind of throat loss and strep cells. Yeah. Whereas my mum phones up the doctor first thing she can. I'm I'm straight down there with my dad. They're they're snapping into action. They're trying to sort me out. Mm. It's a bit like that Ronnie Corbett thing, <laughs> isn't it? What? Sorry! That sorry thing. <laughs> you're right, Carl, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's just like that. Oh, no, dear. It's, it's just cause you I've just went on holiday with your parents. <laughs> well, not me, not with mine. No, with right. Suzanne's and it won't be happening again. So, well, that's we're, that sort we'll have more about that a little bit later. Pain well, luckily we we came in a few times, didn't we? We've we been here since about half eleven, haven't we? Yeah, sorting Doing stuff out. Doing a show. What, have, you been, have you been squeezing his head or? Uh, no, that's that's strictly between the hours of one and three. We established that, okay. um, and I've kept the rules, haven't I? I did practice the grip in the week, didn't I? Yeah, just what? to see what method he was going to use today. Yeah, um, I came in. I, I, I did my back on Tuesday. I was sparring, and I pulled my back, and I was in agony, and I had to get an emergency um, uh, chiropractor out and sort it out. And I couldn't. I was on painkillers and I couldn't walk the next day. But I still came in and did a voiceover that was booked at four thirty, didn't I? I got Johnny to walk me in because I couldn't sit down, so I couldn't take a cab. But I could be upright, and I had to walk. Uh, got him to walk me in because I was scared someone was going to bump into me. And I did the voiceover. That's dedication, isn't it? Yeah, but right. I got back off holiday on the. Uh, on the Tuesday, right? Um, first day back was going to be on the Wednesday, right? So I thought, well, I'll take it easy, cos you do that, don't you, when you've been on holiday? Mm. The first day you just wanna sort of- I don't, I'm straight back into it. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, but it's nice to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just sort of look at your emails, go through all them, work out what mm. people need and stuff. Sure. Doss around, doss around, yeah, sure. Um, mm. so I thought, I'll take it easy. As soon as I got in, I was told that Ricky had been booked in to do a voiceover. And I thought, oh. Can't handle that. Do you know what I mean? On the first day, him coming in, annoying me, probably trying to get a week's worth of head squeezing in. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. So I called him up and he said, oh, I might not come in because I've got a bad back. I thought, well, that's all right. All right. Uh, then you just turned up, didn't you? He said, yeah. oh, I managed to get in a cab. Yeah, and Johnny uh, walked me in and that's what, yeah. And, and he, he did, he did the stuff, which I haven't got it here at the moment, but I'll, I'll find it on the system and I'll play you uh, what he did. <laughs> that he's been paid to do as well. <laughs> it's alright, yeah, do you- Well, it's, it's not alright. <laughs> I had to pretend it was alright when I played it to all my bosses <laughs> to try and well, let's, well, look, let's play that a little bit later, but now, as we're all back together, Steve, would you say the boys are back in town? Yeah. Brilliant. Then Lizzie. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. Right, we are back in town. <laughs> Me, Steve, and Carl. Carl's on holiday. <sighs> Steve's been living with his mother because he had a sore throat and I've- I've been hobbling around still trying to do you know what, keep what, things going. Do you know why I think I was ill? Stress. I genuinely think it was stress. I think- I, I'm beginning- no, I'm analysing it. What do you think I'm, of that, Carl? But I'll tell you what it is, look, think about it though, we got- like, we live in London, we got the war, the threat of terrorist activity. That's where I live, I'm alright. Next one. We got <laughs> SARS. One. Yeah, but you can walk to work, I got to travel on the tube, I came in this morning, I saw a Chinaman sneeze, I was terrified. <laughs> S Club 7, they've split up. <laughs> I mean, like, I worry about those sort of people. They're young kids, they're talented guys. I mean, like, they say they're gonna be alright. I'm not sure Tina is. I'm not sure she's got the talent. So, there's just so many elements that I stress remember me you out. were worried about hearsay. Well, Kim Marsh is doing alright. Well, Kim's doing fine, but she got out early. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I'm not sure the rest of them will be. You know, no. I'm just. Uh, they're quite emotional. I've got to worry about the show, I've got to be worried about this, you know. It's, it's, it's just me. I've, uh, I've never been that good when, like, anyone in the family's ill or anything. I've just got. 
Just because that's the way I am, do you know what I mean? If I'm ill, I don't expect people to run about. No, well, I've never been off for being ill. I mean, you were. Did a couple yeah, of weeks ago. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's- But hang that on, I've not missed- I've not missed either of the shows. I'm- I'm ill today, but I'm still here. You- you took a- I seem to remember you took a- you took a show off when you were ill. Yeah. You were windy, I, I was you? really ill. Hmm, right, sure. <laughs> I couldn't- I couldn't even walk to work, though, yeah. that's what I mean. Did you go to the doctors? No, I was oh, too right. ill to get there. Right. <laughs> That's did how bad did, I was. Did he call the doctor out? <laughs> no. Well, interesting. But it's just yeah. that thing, I mean, we were talking about it last night because we were saying to Suzanne, I said, oh, Steve's, you know, he's been living at home all week. She said, oh, is he really <laughs> I like the talks waiting behind your back <laughs> as well. <laughs> Fine. And, yeah, go uh, on. and she said, uh, yeah, she said, what's up with him? I'm a lingering geek. And uh, said. I said, oh, he's, he's got a sore throat or something. She went sore throat? Oh. So, um, she said, well, you don't know how serious it is, don't be, you know. Don't be offhand with him tomorrow, cause you know, if he's coming in and he's still not right. Cause she's- she always sticks up for you. Yeah. Right? Um, and she said, and anyway- some sense. She said, and anyway, you're no good when people are ill. I said, hang on, what are you talking about? So, um, apparently, when we first sort of started going out, the first time she was ill, she kind of thought- she saw the real me. <laughs> cause she was Ill, Ill in bed and that, and I was saying, oh, get up. <laughs> and, uh, of course you can drink the- you can drink alcohol with these. <laughs> And I just was like, you know, y you make yourself feel worse if you lie in bed. I said, come yeah. on, we need to go shopping. <laughs> and she said, you go shopping. I said, no, I'm not, because I'm rubbish at shopping for food. Do you know what I mean? I I'm alright at getting that night's food, but once it starts, like, you've got a plan. Sure, yeah, you're dropping the bananas, I, you know yeah, what Yeah, I you forget mean. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Cause, so she cause said, they're over the floor. Yeah. Well, she was, she was like feeling hot on that. She said, I've got a temperature. I said, we'll come to the supermarket and not hang about in the chicken. <laughs> 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 frozen chicken section, cool yeah. yourself down. Yeah, sure. And, um, <laughs> it, it made her worse. So <laughs> now she was like, do you remember that? And I was kind of oh. like, yeah. Who's that, who's that hot woman sitting in the chicken fillets? Yeah. That's yeah. Carl's girlfriend. Yeah. She's, yeah. A, she's obviously ill again. Even when I was younger, do you know when I told you that I was picked at school to give old people biscuits? Right, yes. Cause you had nice hands, wasn't it? Cause had nice nails, yeah. right? Yeah. And then because I, I went down a storm at that, I went down a storm at that. Said, Bravo! Get him back with the Garibaldi's the best I've ever had. Bravo! What no, do you mean you went down a storm? Because I, I'm into biscuits, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you knew your stuff! I was talking to him about. I'm into biscuits! <laughs> right, so, um. Then Did you make sure that they finished the first layer before you dipped into no, the second layer? No, there's no rules like that. Just no rules. What do you want? What do you want? What do you fancy? Yeah. So, um, then because I was good at that, we, we were going to like a, an old people's home where they're a bit iller. Yeah. Rather than just being old, they were like. Ill. Yeah. And I said, no, not, not doing that. <laughs> not going there. Because they're old people. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want biscuits. Well, yeah, that's the They're too yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Did you have to yeah. dunk them in tea before you fed them to them? No, it was just like, you Did know, you feed them like- Did you, you have to chew- Did you have to chew their food, then stick it down their throat with <laughs> yeah. your face? Like a little bird? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little trolley, right? Yeah. Um, a lad who I didn't really get on with, he, he had good nails as well, so he was serving the tea. Yeah. And I just had a chat and said, oh, do you want a biscuit with that? Yeah. What about this one? Do you like bourbons? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you really did the whole- <laughs> so Yeah. Oh, right, so you weren't just- it wasn't like their choice, you offered a selection. Well, I sort of sold them, because the thing is, there's only so many, so you've got to handle the situation well. Sure. You don't want too many wanting one type, so it's no. like, well, you've had a bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> What a great life they lead. Yeah. They probably only pay about 900 quid a week to stay in that particular home. <laughs> yeah. And they get a free bourbon by a kid with clean nails. <laughs> Brilliant. Whoop de hoo <laughs> oh. So anyway, I found these, uh, things, do you know what oh, I yeah, yeah. So, so what's, what's this? It? Explain this again. Right, so, I got back off holiday. The first job I find out I've got to do is work with Ricky for a voiceover. I do right. a regular thing, I do x-ray magazine, but I'm allowed to make the script up. And they said I could, so I did. Right. So, imagine this. Well, I know you, Rick, and I know you like to put a lot of work into these things. Yeah. You want to do a good job. So he rolls up, he says, let's do it then. He said, what's in the magazine? I said, well, there's a selection of stuff, this is what you've got to sell. He said, leave it with me. Um, he goes into the little booth, um, and the first one he comes up with is this little advert for it, right? X-Way magazine, it's out now, it's a three pounds fifty May edition, uh, uh, music of tomorrow, Dandy Warhol's picture, and there's a free CD <laughs> with all the placebo and the donors, and uh, smog, and nightmares on wax, and Alpine All Stars, only three pounds fifty, it's out now, buy it, innit? it? <laughs> Have you got a sore throat there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's alright, innit? And he was going, you can't, I said, we are doing that, I've done one, that is it, that's it. So, I persuaded him, he went, right, okay, we can possibly put that on XFM, right? I I'll have to see, right? And so I wouldn't do it again. And he went, but you need one for Capital. 
Is it right. Capital will know what I went, right, I'll do one more for Capital, right? Because all the stations advertise the XFM yeah. magazine, right? So this, this is the, uh, the one that you thought would be all right for them. Ooh, hello, you loonies in Radio Land. Dr. Frog here to tell you about the new edition of X-Ray magazine. It's out now and it's only £3.50. You've not heard of it. It's a great music magazine. And you get a free CD featuring bands like Placebo, they wear makeup, but leave them alone. Gold Chain, Smog, OK Go, The Donners, and all great bands that you'll you're love to- Froggy here, hello. Bye! Ribbit, ribbit, Froggy says, buy it. <laughs> oh, well. So then... <laughs> He says that's it. He's got your money's worth. Dr. Frog's still on there. <laughs> he's, he's still on classic. I said that isn't gonna go out. They're not gonna be happy with that. He says you've had your money's worth. I'm going. Yeah. So I'm left with that. <laughs> I then have to get the bosses in. And because I've let him go, in a way, it's my responsibility. Yeah. So I've I've obviously thought I've got what I need. <laughs> yeah. I had to play them to the MD. What did and, he say? And justify. Well, I was sort of thinking if I laugh. He might go, well, I don't get it, but he finds it funny. Oh, brilliant. Well done. So I was laughing, he was sort of thinking, you know. Excellent. Is that it? Brilliant. When do they go out then? Uh, I think, I think one of them's going out at the moment. Excellent. I think the first one's going out. Brilliant. Well, let's, uh, let's play a great track then. Is it Dr. Frog? <laughs> well, I'd like to see Dr. Frog feature maybe on our show more often. <laughs> okay. Oh. I've got some new comedy characters. I can't believe we're that. You know I love, uh, the work of, um, comedy greats like Chris Moyles and Noel Edmonds. I've got some really funny comic characters that'll be popping in and out of the studio. <laughs> Save them. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Badly drawn boy. All possibilities on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Hilton, and a few a few new characters. Oh, Steve. I can't believe As you said, you know, you, you, I mean, you, I know you love Moyles and his his sort of wacky stuff and Chris Moore, Edmonds one of the greats, one of the and Edmonds, not just all oh, the. No, um, well, I'm going to go along the same sort of vein. I've got a couple of. Can I do a little? Can I show you? Oh, I'm excited. Okay, right. It always starts with a sort of doorbell. Okay. So goes there. Uh, ding dong. I go. Oh no. Hold on, Steve. Hold on, Carl. Who's that at the door? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, look. It's Camp David, the right queer gay. Oh, hello. Hello. You you look all gay today. Is that because it's nice weather? Oh, no. That's not what it means. Oh, um, have you got a girlfriend, C Camp David, the right queer gay? No, but I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bye. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, ding yeah. dong. Oh, it's another yeah. one. On. Another comment. C hello. Oh, look. It's holy fuck. The little funny right. Chinese fella. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's his name. Carl. That's his name, Carl. 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 Hello, holy fuck. Hello. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Fine. So, that's fine. Um, Mr. Fuck, you can call me holy right. if you want. No, I prefer to call you fuck. Yeah. Right? You're right. Nothing You're right. wrong with this so far. I'm no, right. no, no. Um, um, have, have you got a, a girlfriend, Mr. Fuck? Achoo. Oh, okay. oh, you haven't got that SARS, have you? Yeah, yeah. Top no, that's my right. girlfriend's name. <laughs> See? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, just before you go, Mr. Fuck, <laughs> I've got, um, I've got two, <laughs> I've got two things here. I've got a nice trilby hat that you could wear. Yeah. Or I've got a little lampshade. Right. Right? W which one do you want to put on your head yes. and walk around? I presume the trilby. No, but it's not. No. Yeah. yeah. Lampshade. Lampshade, of course. Bye. Yeah. See, ya. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were <laughs> genius. Can I be honest? I, I mean, I'll be honest. I thought they were. I thought they were. <laughs> you didn't. I mean, you didn't steal them off Chris. No, 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 no. They're original. They're original. Sometimes characters. Chris Moyles has done stuff as good as that. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But no, these these are all mine. So, so uh, there you go. We'll be, we'll be, um, we'll be hearing more from um, Camp David, the right queer gay. And oh, how the fuck one. the funny little one. Chinaman? What? <laughs> All right, Carl. Mm. Yeah, is that your sort of humour? It might not be your sort of humour. You just should have run it past me before you did it. Yeah. What one are you worried about in particular? The uh, the the uh, <laughs> not Camp David. Well, no. Say his name. No. Say his name. Which one? Like, I don't know which one you mean. The Chinese fella. <laughs> but I, I forget who that was. What was his name? I can't remember. <laughs> well, if you can't remember, it can't be that good, so we'll leave it. We won't do it again. Right? I'll tell oh. you what I've got, Steve. Oh, what? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Go yeah. on. Right? Um, do you know, like, TV programs sort of get rested in the winter? Ding dong. Oh, no. Hang on, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. Uh, hello hello on. again. Not, not now, Mr. Fuck. We're talking. <laughs> Bye. Is that Holy Fuck again? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank God.
<laughs> right, okay, that's it now. I'm not answering the door anymore. Right, okay, go on. Right, um, yes. Ding dong, ding dong, ding no. dong, ding dong. He's trying to get in. You've got to, don't be impolite, Rick. Come on, Rick, he wants to come in. <laughs> no, it's too late. It's too late. He's, he's, he's gone away now. Go on. Right, anyway, what I'm nice thinking hat. is, what I'm thinking is, Rockbuster's coming back for a bit. What? <laughs> what, what are we talking about? <laughs> he likes my idea, he likes my characters, he just likes that idea. No, I was gonna say if I came up with uh <laughs> With what? Name with, that, with that Chinese fella. What was his name for a sketch, the game? <laughs> you wouldn't have liked it. Uh, well, let's let's do Rockbusters and see how it goes. I know you weren't a fan of it, but Hang on, Yeah, I but thought... I, to be to be honest, Carl, he dissed cheap as chimps. And we know that's a brilliant idea. Hang on, sorry, we 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 all agreed that Rockbusters was a piece of old talk. No, I didn't. <laughs> I said it needed to be. And that's why we stopped doing it. I said it needed resting for a bit. I don't remember that conversation. What do you mean it, it needed resting? Just we, we abandoned it because it was appalling. You just you, you it started off as a nice idea, but you just gone crazy. It no, made it let's play a record and come back to this, shall we? What do you want to play? Bit of sugar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. That cheer was all up. I don't know why you were thinking of bringing this back. I'm genuinely worried about this. Well, uh, is that the doorbell? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would be lying, Rick, if I told you that that didn't feature in my list of the best singles ever. That's lovely. It's a if I can't change your mind, great, sugar. great pop tune. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm, I think Carl's worried about one of the names of my characters, so I'm changing uh, the the gay fella's name to David Gray, the bent pianist. Right. <laughs> The Scientist, Coldplay, on XFM 104.9, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. So, uh, Carl's just getting a little bit frustrated there with Steve, having nothing to offer after being off for a week. Do you know what he calls you now, behind your back? Oh, God, here we go. No, it's quite, it's alright. He calls you the Professor, cos of a picture of you in, um, My Media. Oh, right. <laughs> it's what did you say? He said he- Did you approve it? <laughs> I didn't actually, know. <laughs> no, you know what it is, don't you? It's, you know when you take it from an angle, it sort of distorts one side. And right. they've taken a picture from a bigger picture, I think. And so, it's, do you know what I mean? Like he's look, looking in a kettle. Right. And he went, what's going on there? He said he looks like one of those professors of BBC Two schools programmes. <laughs> well, I take that as a compliment, considering what I call you behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you now, ain't the professor. <laughs> Although, on. Carl's looking pretty good at the moment, aren't you? I'm oh. surprised, can I just say, I'm surprised that you, that you got chosen for having clean nails at school to serve the biscuits. Cos I, I, I always imagine you, when I look at you, I see you as a child, I see you as a grubby little child who's always out in the street I getting dirty. I think Carl is quite hygienic cos he's always got a nice little- Nowadays I do. Yeah, a nice little not, top not the, on. Not the, not the boyhood, Carl. I always uh, imagine you being quite neglected. <laughs> no, me, me clothes weren't always the best, and they were a bit warm, but they were always clean. Yeah. yeah. Which, it's, it's I always imagine that your house coming on. Is you gonna <laughs> do, is it, are you Dolly Parton? <laughs> I always imagine your house as having, and actually, to be fair, so do, I imagine your house being very much the same. Always stinking of chip fat. Yeah. yeah also, yeah. yeah my, my mum was always cleaning. So again, the, it, it was always sort of like clean. It was just yeah. it, it smelled. It smelled and cigarette of, smoke, maybe. Uh, yes, yeah, it smelled of Dettol, um, pets. Yeah, and uh, and cigarette smoke. Yeah, and such chip a fat. working class and smell. Chip yeah, yeah. That's a real working class uh, sort of smell and look and stench. Yeah, Are you talking about me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The interesting thing is that Carl's cleaned up his act. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very. I clean. I have two baths. No, I, no, I, you're obsessed. It's I love. Freakish. I love. Is this really bad of me? I was in uh, Waitrose earlier buying a sandwich. I got a bit of money now, Carl. I like to splash out on a sandwich. I like two pound fifty. You ever seen any of it? Benji's shot. <laughs> Going to Benji's. I tell you what, I love we go for lunch, right? And if he looks in the restaurant and it's sort of like six fifty, he goes, "Rick, I'm not made of money." Yeah, he is. Mm. We have to go to Benji's. He gets two sandwiches that have to fill him up, right? Because they're a quid well, each. I'm a or guy, but I'm a big guy. I need a lot more food. I need genuinely need more food than most people. I'm like a brontosaurus. It is. He's just grazing all day. So I, that, you know, I, I can't afford to sort of splash out in pret a manger all the time with your, your fancy f French <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, I like to get a lot of bread for the money. I want a lot of bread. Um, so I was, so I was in Waitrose and some guy came in behind me, yeah. and he was sort of—I don't think he was mentally 
uh, Dulali, but I think he'd been homeless for just too long, and he was really. Uh, what, what's what's just right at the time to be homeless? <laughs> well, I think it was. Past you want to get, get out of that game early, don't you? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. past the point of no return. This guy. <laughs> right, I yeah. think it was like it was too late for him. Oh, I think okay. There was no going yeah. back, really. Um, <laughs> Six he, months. He, got the best he was out of walking you. a bit of a weird angle. He walked like the Elephant Man, even though he wasn't deformed. It was probably like you were in the week. It was quite. Yeah. It was quite unpleasant. And he sort of came up to me and he went, oh, and he, and weirdly he spoke a bit like I'm speaking now because of my throat. And he was, and I thought if I speak to him back, is he going to think I'm taking the mix? So I kept quiet. Mm -hmm. And he went, ah, oh, all right, what's your name? And I said, uh, Steve. And he shook my hand. He forcibly took my hand and shook it. But he had these cuts and bruises on his face. Ah, oh, the open sores. Yeah, and I, and he was shaking my hand, and I was just terrified. I was just thinking, get off my hand, let go of my hand. And thankfully, I- Did he have a bow round his neck? Well, he may as well have. I mean, <laughs> seriously, and I, I caught the eye of a security guard, I'd him thrown out. You know, <laughs> I walk up. <laughs> this man does not have the funds to be exactly. shopping here. This is Please have him removed. This is part of the John Lewis partnership. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so they had him thrown out. And you know, I, seriously then, I was just freaked out. I had to wash my hand as soon as I could. I just, I, it was just, I couldn't imagine the kind of grime that was crawling across whether he's kind of homeless way. Are you, are you still, me. are you still doing your social work? Or you, <laughs> you, whenever I can, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. At least he used to give it to old people biscuits. You'd have gone, oh, I'm not going near them. Look at them gums. Wouldn't you have, wouldn't that have been grim? Would you have wanted that though? Old, like, old kind of homeless people touching you? Uh, well, no, it's I'm not. I'm not Jesus Christ. No, I know. I know. It's not on the list. <laughs> I know it's dropping this on. What do I know? I need some batteries from a Walkman. I need to be touched <laughs> by some old people. See you later. Obviously, this is, I was watching, uh, the one thing I did watch all, all week was Columbo, which seems to be on oh. constantly, and I was watching Columbo, and I know you're a fan of Columbo, Wick. But one of my favourite programmes of all time. But right. I was like, do you I'll not think that he- it. Alright, alright. I just thought you were gonna talk about it. Well, so. well which one? They, what, they, they, what do you they, mean? They, they made it? about uh, 90, and they're showing on about four channels in rotation. But it doesn't matter if I tell you who did it, because you'll find out in the first yeah, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, exactly. you find out in the first two minutes I mean, anyway. I let's be honest, if Robert Vaughan's the star, it's probably gonna be him. Or, or, or Culp. Often Robert Culp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes Patrick McGowan. <laughs> but do you not think that Columbo looks like he smells? Would you imagine he smells a bit? He's a brilliant detective. Well, he's I, got that dog, and he smokes cigars, so I imagine he smells- I reckon smells he stinks. I reckon he doesn't clean his clothes enough. Oh, I think he has a- I think he gets up and washes, but I, I think, think he puts on a crumpled old I think he's too minded I think he's too busy thinking on solving crimes and stuff. What do you think- do, do, do you think his wife like, makes I think him clean his pants now and again? I think they're quite a bohemian couple. I'm not sure she's really interested in that. I think she's kind of- she's got her own mind. Maybe she's a painter or something. No, you maybe- know. maybe she's, uh, she's losing it a bit and he's a bit embarrassed by yeah, it. Yeah, that could be the truth. And that she's probably true. incontinent, so while she's ironing his trousers, she just- just- <laughs> All over them, and he goes, yeah. Oh my god, she shat in my pants again. I gotta wear the belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's. That's what. Oh, ding dong! <laughs> Who's that? This? Oh, hello! Oh, look, it's it's David Gray, the bent piano player. Oh! Alright. I thought it was gonna be Columbo. Very good joy. Ding dong! <laughs> oh, right. and, uh, my wife loves you. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I don't believe it. Look who's doing that. I can't believe that. Do you, uh, do you want to do Rockbuster, Steve, now? Can we, can okay, we Okay, listen. It? With the whole Rockbusters thing, I, I don't want to be responsible for bringing it back. So, I think we should put it to the vote. You should be email in. We'll give people five minutes to email in. I'll take a straw poll. Do you want to see the return of Rockbusters or not? We're leaving it to you right. and the audience uh, to decide. Okay, Steve. Uh, I guarantee it's going to be a landslide. They are all gonna want it. But why have we ever trusted our listener? We, we know what they're like. You've just described some of them with a bloke in white trousers and Columbo's wife shitting herself. So that's the sort of people that uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, it was actually it was weird because the waitress guy did ask for my autograph before he was hauled away. <laughs> so maybe he is a listener. <laughs> but all I'm saying is maybe there's some, maybe the posters have drawn in some fresh blood. There's some people who've maybe not heard Rockbusters before. They're the ones who probably vote for it. Anyone else who's heard it before, surely they're not going to see the return of that. No one wants to see oh, the Oh, what's the number? No, let's email only. We don't yeah, want see, to speak to these freaks. Ricky Dr. Vague is at well, I love the fact we don't want to speak to these freaks. We work with one of them. Yeah. God. Yeah. If you want to see the return of Rockbusters, vote yes. If not, no. Tone it down a bit. Let's not do three. No, I, I, it's got to be three, otherwise oh. it's too easy. Oh. Ricky Dr. Vase at xfm.co.uk. Right. Just choose the best one. Right. The Seeker from The Who. Brilliant. Classic rock. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Alright, well, unsurprisingly, the overwhelming consensus is that people would like to hear the return of Rockbusters. I should, however, point out just some of the, some of the no responses. Uh, let me see what we've got is here. Is Dickie Anderson called in yet? Sadly, nothing from Dickers. I think I might make him one of my, um, hilarious yeah. sort of comedy <laughs> characters. What do you think he would sound like? 
Um, what would he sound like? He sort of probably like that, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Ding dong. Hello. Hey, it's, hey, it's Dickie Anderson. I can't believe it. Your show's rubbish. Something like that? I, I mean, I think you should work on them perhaps before you, you- You're saying there's not a lot of substance these I'm guys. just saying that, you know, once the novelty of the doorbell is, <laughs> is worn off. Well, um, I don't think you understand comedy on radio, I'm Steve. I'm not sure I do, but To be honest. Sorry. Listen- I'm, listen to Noel Evans, listen to Moyles. You'll see, you don't need to riff with it. It's just- you just do the doorbell and just say they're here. <laughs> right. That's all you need to do. <laughs> sure. So, sure. that's the main thing. Well, so we've had a couple of I'm thinking of some more characters as well. Well, keep working on those. Yeah. Marcus has emailed, um, he says no to Rockbusters, he hasn't heard it but it sounds rubbish. Believe me, you- mm. you couldn't be more right. Well, does The Office sound good as a title? Right. <laughs> uh, this is someone else, don't bring back Rockbusters. Please can we have more holy fook? <laughs> <laughs> You're not pronouncing it right, I Steve. know, I know, I was just a bit edgy there. Um, holy, holy fuck, the little oh. Chinese fella. The so little funny, you... Holy fuck, the little funny Chinese fella. No, okay, all right, well, otherwise, Carl, other than those few negative ones, most people want to see the return of Rockbusters. So, do I okay, tell, go on I tell people what the prizes Okay, go on Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Are these the prizes? Yeah, they're the prizes. All right, yeah. let me have a look. We've got the new album from Gold Frap. What's this one here? Oh, uh, well, I have no idea. Uh, the Yardbirds. A new album from the Yardbirds. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> On VHS, uh, Coogan's Run, the, uh, the, uh, show where different characters make an appearance each week, including, I think, Pauline and Paul Calf. Good stuff. Who the hell wants this? Meg Loss. Uh, a Tom Baker Doctor Who edition. And the only decent thing, really, in the collection, uh, other than Coogan's Run, is the, uh, X List, the, uh, double CD featuring lots of current indie favourites. So, um, not bad, not bad little selection there, Carl. Yeah, Rock well, Busters. uh, if you are new, you haven't heard it before, I sort of give a cryptic clue, and then some well, initials. <laughs> I'd say it wasn't, it isn't cryptic. It's, it's like, what am I thinking, that might or might not be the initials that I'm gonna say. That's how you gotta think, really. Yeah. But go on. Do you wanna remind them of any? Spring to mind, just to, as a uh, exploding pet was atomic kitten. Doesn't really work. Mm. Um, um, what else? I fell down in a puddle in Texas. I got my legs wet. Uh, knelt down in the puddle, got my legs wet. Uh, wet knee Houston doesn't work either. Wet um, knee Houston, Whitney Houston. Uh, Jamaican uh, uh, swinging a fish round. Uh, Detroit spinners doesn't work <laughs> in the slightest. Doesn't work that's in idea, the slightest. That's idea of how they work. So um, there's three of them. You email in. Um, so here we go then. Uh, number one, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. Right? The gingerbread man has only got one leg. Got the it. initials there, LB. LB. LB, right? Okay. Second one, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Alright? These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. The okay. initials TTD. Right? And, uh, the third one, have a holiday in Italy. Right? So you've done three then? TB is the initials on that one. So quickly again, the first one, Gingerbread Man's yeah, on. Yeah, I've got, got that one, one as well. I've got that one. I've got two. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot, TTD. And, uh, the third one, have a ho holiday in Italy, TB. Email in with what the songs are and you win that stuff. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Hang on, it's not the songs, it's the artists, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just the <laughs> Oh yeah, like, like he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Email only please, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. We got that going. Yeah, looking forward to uh, the answers on that. Bit of uh, feeder would be good, wouldn't it? Alright. I love this. Placebo and Bitter End. I don't want to contradict you lads, but it's not. We've got a full hour to go on the uh, <laughs> Ricky Gervais show on XFM 104.9. I am Ricky Gervais, the aforementioned Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters. <laughs> Oh, ding dong. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's, it's p a posh bloke who doesn't care about poor people. <laughs> Hello, posh bloke, what are you doing? I'm in my Rolls Royce and I don't like the homeless. Oh, posh bloke, don't be a c you want to do that? Satire. That is satire. Yeah. I, I just, I, uh, there's nothing like so it. it's political as well. I'm getting oh, in well, political so many, things. Oh, there's so many things. Don't even begin to show off. I, mean, I was showing that foreigners, some foreigners are funny. I got in the fact that, like, if you, if you notice that Chinese people wear different hats to us. Yes. So that's political in a yes. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Well, the thing is, Steve, right, that is like what <laughs> I imagine Ricky's house being like when people are ringing the bell. 
Because they're all so different, he's got a little- He's obsessed with all my friends being slightly different to each other. I- I've never understood it. He goes, there's no thread. There's no thread to them. All my mates have got a thread running through them. I was in literally after <laughs> they walk out of the home. Yeah. But what do you mean my friend's all different? Well, that could be- you, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, if I was round there and the bell went and I said, do you want me to get it? And he said, yeah, and I opened it and it's, you know, uh, what, holy fuck? Holy, <laughs> yeah, he's at the door, right, and then I'd say he's busy, close the door, bell would go again, then you got the little gay fella. David Gray. Yeah. And then, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not really, no. Cause he's met some of my friends and he, he looks at them in a weird way. I mean, some of them are weird, but, um, he's just- what? Oh, the other night, right, he's got a thing about Robin, my mate Robin, right, he was a lovely bloke, right, he's going, I can't- I can't be handling him, he talks too much, he talks- you know, Robin sort of goes, blah, 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 and he's- he talks really fast and he's- he's sort of riffing all the time and that, and it- because it does me head in. Why is he talking like that? And, um, uh, I said, uh, it's Carl going out for a drink, I went, uh, he went, Robin's not gonna be there, is he? I went, no. And I was there with, uh, um, Johnny, and, um, I'd set him up, I knew Robin was gonna be there. Robin comes in, sits down and goes, hi, I go, alright, Carl goes out, I'm going. And I, and Robin sort of looks at him, I went, oh, don't be stupid, he went, no, and, and this is in front of Robin, who's confused, Carl goes, uh, points at him, p finger, he goes, I said was he gonna be here, uh, you know I don't like him. And Robin just, uh, um, it was unbelievable, it was That's unbelievable. Appalling. It was unbelievable, Steve. And Robin sort of looked like really genuinely sort of upset, he goes, well, shall I go? I went, no, don't. And Johnny went, oh, Carl, uh, he's a lovely bloke, right? And Carl went, well, no, uh, uh, you know, I'm less annoyed at Robin now, who's done nothing <laughs> no, of course. than you. And I went, look, just ch have a chat. Have a look. He goes, no, it's not worth it. You know, and Robin was going, right. I go, Robin, stay. He went, no. So I went, and I made him stay, and in the end they were getting on, weren't you? Well, yeah, in the end, I he can't was believe what were you thinking, Carl? What kind of a despicable man are you? That's a, that's why am I the bad one? All the things one? you've done, Hang on that a is terrible. Why am I the bad one when it's this? It, when it's Ricky's fault that we were both there anyway? <laughs> we all understand. <laughs> but it's the a rule public is, place. You don't say to someone in front of them, "I don't like this person. I'm shooting off." I don't think I said it like that. You, did, you, said, it, you, said, it, you said exactly Carl. like that. Yeah, and he was like genuinely confused, and he was sort of like sitting there thinking, "Oh, do I have to take this? What have I done?" And he was upset anyway. He just done a show that didn't. You, you know. are one of those typical manks who are arrogant, and they swagger around the place like I don't need anyone. And I'll tell you this: if Suzanne, if you ever lose Suzanne, you are going to be one lonely man. I'll tell you because you make you make no effort to maintain your friendships. You, it, you say these sort of things that he's saying to you about Liverpudlians, and I'll tell you what: I've never met a Liverpudlian as rude as you. You are, you're like the Oasis Brothers, you know, Larry, <laughs> loud, rude, No, but I uncivil. said no, Ro Robin's alright, I had a chat with him. He was mm. a bit quieter the other night, he was fed up. I said if he's fed up all the time I'd be happy. I said, I said- He's fed up because you've just insulted yeah. him! and he said he was alright, he didn't talk much. I said when he was upset because he'd been in the show and he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, well tell me next time when his family dies we'll have another drink. I don't know what you're like, Carl. I don't know what <laughs> you're like, mate. You are a- oh, I just think you're- the more I, I get to know you, the more I think you're not a good mate it. with him. You would like taking the fun out of his, uh, out of his little thumbs that he's got. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, that's my squeezing his head to you, isn't it? I've got different, different mates with different parts of the body. Yeah. I like to squeeze your head, I like to look at his thumbs and that. It's weird, you know, cause right, I was, I was thinking of doing a bit of educating Ricky. Yeah. Right? I'm always looking for stuff, learning stuff as well as doing another <laughs> job and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and w when we went out with Robin, <laughs> And, uh, what does this mean to anyone? Yeah. I'm just having a conversation about people they don't know. Go on. Well, well it's enough, innit? His name's Robin, he's got really small thumbs, <laughs> right? <laughs> he looks a bit like, um, Millhouse, doesn't yeah. he? That sums it up. He's like Elephant Man, you know what you get in there, right? Robin, he's got little thumbs, right? So, <laughs> I, I wonder in, if he's listening. I wanted to do some, uh, <laughs> research and I thought, I wonder if there's anything on small thumbs, right? <laughs> I found something. Do you know the saying, uh, rule of thumb? Oh, is it an inch? Well, well, it, do you know what the saying is? Oh, means? is it the, hitting some, hitting your wife with a stick? Yeah, Okay, let, go on, explain. Well, rule of thumb, do you know what that saying means if someone says? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, it just means, it, it, a rule of thumb, it's usually, a general rule. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. Well, where it actually came from is, years ago, uh, husbands weren't allowed to sort of clout the wife, with anything. <laughs> what was it like in the past? <laughs> I know, you yeah. You couldn't clout your missus. With anything wider than your thumb. That the stick had to be the same, no bigger than your thumb. 
Oh, no, so, it's thinking, it's so a big bloke. could do no damage if he <laughs> went out with anyone. <laughs> Although it's wide, it's, it's got a little thumb like a little knob, and it? It's like it's truncated, because it starts off normal. It, it, it looks like he's had, um, his big toes put on his hands. Does he have to drink a pint with two hands? Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's dropping stuff all the time. Can I he's just go back to the rule of thumb thing, though? Uh, the idea- what date was this? I'm not asking Carl, I'm looking at Ricky, cause you're not gonna have any idea, Carl, it's just gonna be the past. Yeah. But I like the idea that- I think it's the same sort of day where, I don't know, you- it, it, you got hung for being homosexual and you could shoot a Welshman. I just love the idea that there's people- there's blokes beating their wives with shovels, logs of wood, and someone's gone, hang on a minute, everyone, Hold on, wait crazy. a minute, let's have a look at your thumbs. <laughs> what can minute, we do? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've gotta have some kind of rule here. I'm all for beating your wife, but let's have some kind of rule. Let's give them a sporting chance. Yeah. Sure. He goes, well, I'll tell you, well, what about you can hit her with the width of your thumb? And the wife goes, make it the width of his knob. <laughs> she, I go, no. He no. slaps her again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. R width of your thumb. All right. <laughs> Better? Yeah. It's like the, um, it's like I always remember seeing in the swimming baths, there used to be, uh, those signs that would say, um, no running, no jumping. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. No bombing. Fair enough. Um, no petting. No petting. It's like you're not allowed to kiss. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I love the idea that it's probably some kind of lifeguard who sort of maybe saw his ex-girlfriend getting off with some bloke in the water and thought, yeah. oh, bloody hell. Right. Like, there's no petting anymore in here. What do you mean? No petting. You can't, you're not allowed to kiss her or uh, uh, no one. You're not doing this just because no, you used to go- No, nothing. There's, no, there's not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Just leave and don't kiss. You want to swim, swim, but don't kiss. There's no, no, look, no petting. Did you just write that on in yeah. yourself in Byron? Yeah. No. What's this no fiddling downstairs in or out the swimming pool? No. No fiddling no. with her downstairs? No, 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 no. no, no. All right. That does annoy yeah. me though. I was saying to Ricky the other night when we were walking somewhere. <laughs> no taking her for a drink afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you can't enforce yeah. that. People who kiss and that in the street. That oh, annoys yeah. me. Yeah, people showing their affection for one another. Oh. No. They can hold their hand and that. Yeah. Sure. But it was just. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, yeah. I see two people eating each other, at, like, in a restaurant or something. Two like people this. eating each other? You know, snogging oh, in right, public, okay. yeah. <laughs> so what's that? Uh, <laughs> answers for Rockbusters we're doing now? Yeah, oh, uh, well, come on then. Well, well no, I, I think let's play a record, let's come uh, back with answers Apparently we got Busters. a, what about a bit of Cure? Do you want a bit of Cure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna go wrong, we're gonna go wrong. Ding with. dong. Oh, here he is. Oh, it's a fat fellow with lipstick. <laughs> Hello! Oh. <laughs> a forest. The Cure. XFM 104.9. Good track, innit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Going, going all the way back. All the way back there. Wow, Rockbusters. The results. You've had a few real answers, uh, proper answers, I hear. Mm. So, either I'm wrong or people do think like you. I've got two of them. What are the clues again? Right. Uh, first one was, uh, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. I got that. That was LB. Limp Biscuit. Right. Yeah, uh, the that third works. One, the third one that I think you worked out. Yeah. Have, a, have a holiday in Italy. Cheering breaks. TB, cheering breaks. Yeah, this is the one I can't get. If if this is, if there's a reason why I can't get this, we're not doing what Can again. I give the answer to this one? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the clue? The clue, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Yeah. TTB. TTB. The answer. TD. Yeah, go on. Give the clue again. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Tourette's Trent Darby. Right, you're never doing Rockbusters again. Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> right, you're not <laughs> doing it. You're never doing- you've blown it. You see, you sneak that one in, you- uh, uh, Yeah, but I, I always like to sort of give to that, you know, a fairly easy and then you, you, you sort of work out the men from the boys then, don't you? Yeah, but I, I mean, if I'd have done a character called Tourette's Boy, friend of the little Chinaman, and it went, ding dong, oh look, it's Tourette's boy, friend of, holy fuck, fuck, holy fuck, you'd have been annoyed. Do you know what I mean? Oh, who's your mate, Tourette's boy, holy fuck? You'd have been annoyed, wouldn't you? Is that a character from Lenny Henry's show? <laughs> <laughs> I, last night, I, can't I can't remember if it's Chris Moore's or Lenny Henry. Uh, yeah, one of them. Right. Anyway, the winner, lucky old Richard Perks from Birmingham. He's listening presumably on Sky, and so nice to have him listening. And that's Richard Perks. He's got those answers, all of them right. In fact, most people seem to get uh, Terence Trent Darby or Tourette's mm. Trent Darby. Well, I think that's offensive. Um, if you want to complain, um, what's the number? What's, what do they write to, to complain about that? Mm -hmm. Us uh, using. Uh, the same person you tell people to write to and tell them I was a knobhead and shouldn't be on the radio. <laughs> L last week when I was away. Did anyone do it? I think a few went through. Did you yeah. listen to the show? I, I listened back to the recording of Did it, you yeah. get any emails before you listened to the show? Yeah, when I got in. Did uh, it upset you? What sort of things was it? Just stuff, uh, 
I can't remember. Just uh, it was it was weird because there was like a few of them in a row, and I just thought, what's ha what's happened here? Yeah. And oh, we just because we we said that yeah, because you weren't here. So, <laughs> so what what did you say? I Did just you? said uh, phone in. Um, we had we had a couple of genuine emails that liked the show, didn't they? Yeah. And I said phone in um, uh, uh, and leave messages or email Andrew Phillips and Carl. Pilkington and just say the show was great. The show was brilliant without him. But they went a bit too far, did they? What did they say then? Oh, I can't remember. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I'm not bothered what people say, am I? No. Do you know what I mean? No, you don't care what you don't care what you say to people either. Poor little Robin. He looked crushed. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Well, it doesn't matter because he's he's doing well at what he does. He couldn't he even hitchhike really home because they wouldn't stop because his thumbs didn't show up. He, he couldn't. He, had to, he was waiting there for ages by the side of the road. Do you know the difficulty he has buying gloves? <laughs> <laughs> it's murder for him. <laughs> he, he wears little oven gloves. Yeah. From like Wendy houses. He has to wear, he has to wear Barbie oven gloves. Yeah. Oh. Right, so uh, yeah, so the winner there, Richard Perks in Birmingham, if you could just email him with your address. There um, was another winner, wasn't there? Um, what was his name? It was a- was Actually, there was one, one person who got all the right answers, and there was almost a winner, but his name was Peter K. And I like, I like Peter K just coming second. So yeah. we gave it to Richard Perks. Yeah. <laughs> Peter K. <laughs> Let's play a record. <laughs> Radiohead, there, there. XFM, one hundred four point nine. Rejoice, Steve Mitchell Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Right, Rockbusters. Well, you blo you know, you shot yourself in the foot with that. So, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, what did you think of first? His name and what words you could put in there? Uh, I normally sort of just go through a Guinness Book of Hit singles and go, right, who can I do? All right. You're giving away a lot of. I mean, that you know, you're an enigma, Carl. I wouldn't give away your workings. I mean, because because then everyone would be able to do it. And what you what you've got now is a gift that people can't really tap into. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, that's what that's what Lenny Henry and um, Chris Moles' mistake. See, I, I've sort of worked out how they do their comedy, and I'm doing it now. Mm, sure. Do you see what sure. I mean? Now that, you know, I'm, I'm doing- I mean, I'm the only, I think the only way that, that people would start to be able to replicate a lot of what Carl does is if maybe they had a severe blow to the head <laughs> or they were diving and they came up to the surface too quickly. Ding dong! Oh, I'd like a severe blow! Oh, get lost, David! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have some adverts, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Steely Dan, reeling in the ears. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> look, he, right, he? look, he's gone to put on his little duffel coat. Yeah. Well, not very well. You look like someone that walks around Forbidden Planet. <laughs> um, Don't say that, that's the ultimate insult. <laughs> you can say I look like something that you'd buy in Forbidden Planet, <laughs> but not someone that goes shopping in there. <laughs> Please. The Professor. Oh, the Professor. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, talking about weird looking, um, heads and stuff. Go on. Um, we're, um, doing that cartoon on the internet at the moment, that little cartoon I did of, um, uh, Carl. And the bid's up to- Hang on, sorry, that doesn't make any sense to people that don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I did a little cartoon of Carl. And, um, because he doesn't like his picture in the paper, when people request a picture of us, he started sending that off and he it's in heat, and it? It's gonna be in Jack, and they put it on the internet and they- they're bidding for it, aren't they? Yeah, it's at, uh, two hundred quid. That's that ridiculous, That's isn't crazy. it? That's crazy. So crazy. what I thought was, we've got- a, we've got to frame it, Carl, we've got to put the copy of Heat in or something. You'll have to- the- the- the winning show, the show that they win on, um, you'll have to do a copy of that. So, they, you know what I mean? They get something for their money, I think. I'm- I'm mildly embarrassed. So, uh, it's for good cause and everything. But, um, didn't someone say 250 if they can come in and watch the show? Yeah. We can't do that, we don't allow people- But what I thought was, what about the winner gets to come in and squeeze your head? So they get in for just, just two minutes, we present them with it. No, yeah. I'm not, no. What do you mean, no? I'm not having strangers coming in squeezing my head. What? You mean it's for charity? It's for charity, Cole. Come on, mate. What, I don't, what are you I like? I don't care. I'm not doing that. I think gonna... even an ill person would say, no, d it's all right, I'm not that ill. What do you mean? You don't have to have your head squoze. Yeah, we squoze. Uh, squoze. Squoze! <laughs> you don't have to have your head squoze. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so how are they big so, then? Yeah, so how will they know they've won? xfm.co.uk forward slash Ricky, you can see the picture on there. If you're interested, if you think it's worth more than 200 and you've got some money, then you, you send an email in saying I'll give you, you know, 220 quid or something. But are you not going to let them squeeze your head? So no. we get someone here, the art department here, they're, they're, we're, we're, we frame it up, I'll put a, a little note of like, uh, authenticity, authenticity yeah. Brilliant. A picture of us. Can I have a real picture of you? A little Imagine behind David scenes. Dickinson examining that <laughs> in a couple of years time. <laughs> <laughs> this is as cheap as chips. <laughs> yeah. You can sue him then, cause he ripped off your phrase a little yeah. bit, didn't he? Yeah. You've been done here, mate. You have uh, more money than sense. Uh, 220 quid. I'll tell you what, have we got monkey news today? 
We've we, might not, we might not get to it, mate. We are running out of time. No, we're doing it. What do you mean, we're doing it? It's- The show isn't complete without it. I'd rather drop adverts and stuff. Well, I'd rather drop adverts. No, we're doing monkey news. Do you want it? My concern is that if you put monkey news on the s- on the subs bench, it's gonna be like David Beckham. Yeah. He's gonna have his eye wandering to other radio yeah. stations. Yeah. And look what- what's- look what he's doing. Yeah, he's he off to Real Madrid. He might be leaving off to Real Madrid. I might take monkey news off to radio too or something. Yeah. Right? So yeah. don't, don't um, believe in monkey uh, news. I, on I the bench. imagine if they're listening now, they're probably going to call you and go, Carl, were you serious about bringing monkey news to Radio 2? Because <laughs> it, it checks open. <laughs> well, do, uh, you, do you want a bit now, or what? What would well, it no, I want you to tell uh, Steve about your holiday. Because you told me in the week. Go on. Steve, I mean, bad, bad idea. I had a feeling anyway about uh, going away with, like, Suzanne's mum and dad. Because I've never been into sort of family holidays anyway, yeah. right? Uh, even when you see it, whenever I've been on holiday and you see like families on planes and that and they're all having a laugh and a joke, loving it, and then on the plane going back you can see that they've gone off into groups and like, you know, the dad isn't talking to the daughter and all that business. So I thought, asking for trouble, but you know, I, I do everything once. Do you know what I mean? Boxing, <laughs> dancing, yeah. going on holiday with parents and that. Yeah. Give it a go, see how it goes, right? Mm. So, um Not your A-levels, but fair it, enough. It, it started <laughs> off- it, it started off bad, didn't it? Because last week I told you that, uh you know, our dad called us up and said, you know, I want to take some tea bags with us to Madeira. Yeah. What's the best way of packing them? Yeah. Right, so I knew there was gonna be problems like that cause the thing with, um, Suzanne's family, right, they- they like having a routine. Mm. They know what they're doing every day. Mm, mm. They know what they're having for tea every day. <laughs> it's the same thing every week and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought this is gonna be interesting this cause they can't do what they normally do. Sure. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love you treating it like an experiment. Yeah. Right. Just watching them all the time. So, um, the first problem was they'd never flown before. So I was winding them up a bit. So oh, it's, it's murder. It's really horrible. Uh, you know, the pl- plane goes all over the place. And a mum had done some research saying, well, I've been reading about it and, uh... Well, she got a funny accent. More, more people, uh, more, there's more chance of me being killed on a donkey than there is on a plane. So I upset her. I said, right, when we get there, Spain. I said, when we get there, let's see if there's any donkeys on the beach. Yeah. Right? And she didn't like that. So. Oh, what? The joke about you hoping she died? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's up with her? Right? So we get there, and, um, you know, it, it, they see the villa and that. They're quite happy with all that business, yeah. right? And all that stuff. And then as time went on, I was getting a bit sort of fed up with them being around us all the time. Cause yeah, sure. I think you should have your own time when you go on holiday yeah. course, with the yeah. family. You should say, right, you go off and do your thing. Yeah. We'll do our thing and we'll meet up later and talk about what we've been doing and mm. stuff. Mm. Anyway, so it gets to like the Thursday. We've been away since Monday, right? And uh, said, right, we're going out tonight. So a, a mum says, yeah, we'll come with you. They said, no, no. It's just us, we're having a bit of time on our own, right? Did you, is it true you said to her, you told me this, you said to her, you started to annoy me, I want some time on my own. Well I just said, well I told her at the start, I said it's gonna be interesting this cause people annoy me when they're around me a lot. Sure. So I wasn't nasty to her, I just was saying people, not her. Oh right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you're gonna get on my nerves. <laughs> so sure. um. You hailed a donkey for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no but, uh, seriously right, with the flying, do you know those stockings? That you can get because of uh, deep vein thrombosis. Probably, sure. She had them on in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And it's only a two-hour flight, as well, so that was annoying me. Right, so, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, it gets to this, it gets to this, um, you know, the the, th- the Thursday night when we when I'm going out with Suzanne, yeah. and uh, a mum's like sat sat on the on the sun lounger outside so and so where are we going tonight? I said no like I said it's just it's just us we're going out having a bit of time to ourselves. So uh, I could see as the day was getting on she was realising that she's got a night in with like her husband. Yeah. Right. Uh she started her face started to like look miserable. Sure. I thought I'm loving this. Right? <laughs> so I said right I'm uh, I'm going in to go and have a shower go and uh, get ready for the tonight it's gonna be great. And winding them up, just yeah. wind them up because they can't come. Because yeah. he said they can't. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I go upstairs, have a, uh, have a shower and that. I come down and, uh, a mum's smiling. Oh, hang on. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's, what's going on here? So I went to Suzanne, I said, uh, why is your mum smiling? She's, she's not coming. She said, uh, no, but, uh, my dad said he'll, he'll take her out now. 
So in a way, she was happy because she got her own way, yeah. which annoyed me. That annoyed again. you, sure, because you wanted it's to. Like, what, well, you don't even want holiday. her husband taking her out. <laughs> well, it's just the fact she didn't want to go out. She was happy to stay in and have sausage, egg and chips that they'd found from some shop that sold English food. Right. So that's almost like what they do if they're sausage, at home. Sausage, egg and chips. So yeah. she was happy with that if we were staying in and having that. Because well, we were going out, she was fed up. Right. right? So she's smiling, so she's going, yeah, I'm going out now. So I said, well, enjoy yourself. She said, where are you going? I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You don't need to know. Sure, She's yeah. not going to where we're going. Oh, you just don't want us to be in the same restaurant. So yeah, that's right. I said, I want a night out on my own with Suzanne. It's our holiday as well. Yeah. I don't know how he can talk to you Amazing. This. this is not even his own parents. This is someone else's parents. These are the parents of the women- of the woman he loves. But- but even Suzanne sort of agreed with me. There's only so much time you can spend with your parents. That's why you leave. That's why when you're ill, you don't go home to them. <laughs> Yeah? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Cause the slight difference between y y me and you, Carl, is that <laughs> not everyone in the world annoys me. Well, n not everyone does, just- I can see what- I was- I felt a bit guilty that week when he said I was annoying him, but I realise it's not my fault now. <laughs> no, everyone annoys him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was- it was an alright holiday. It was good to get back. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, won't be doing it again. So. No. And what now would you say is your relationship with Suzanne's parents? Is it, is it a frosty one? Uh, no, I just think they know that I, that I don't like to them, put up them. them for a long time. Yeah. I just mean, when, when we were packing, a man was upset because, like, she really liked the place where we were staying, right? Because it was quite a big villa, because there was a few of us. There was a brother as well with us, right? Yeah. So, uh, a mum said, oh, I love it here. She said, uh, I'm definitely gonna book this place again. I said, it's a big, big, you know, a bit big for two of you, isn't it? Just being sarky, like, we're yeah. definitely- just- I said, just cause, uh, you know, I won't be coming again. You're like- I don't know what you're like, Carl. You're just- you're a monster. You're an absolute you're monster. You're one of the people that goes, I say as I speak as I find, I say as I- and, and uh, jibber whap the wibble. Yeah. And never the way will slep. You're like uh. a middle-aged man. You're like an old man. You're like an old man and you're, and you're what, thirty? I'm just imagining you scraping along in clogs and a flat cap going, oh, that tree's got to come down. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Puncturing a kid's ball if he kicks it into your garden by mistake. Yeah. Refusing to give it back. Mm. Yeah. Uh, gather round, gather round. Yeah, there were once Chinese kid as airy as that cow, which is weird because there's not many <laughs> Chinese people that are airy, but this one, I tell you, it were back in 1990. Granddad, are you eating a Twix? <laughs> Well, that's you too, uh, with or without you, but we've got to cut it a little bit short because we're actually running out of time. It's so jam-packed, this show. We've got monkey news on the bench. Carl, just remembered, we've got Cheeky Freak of the Week to oh, fit in. Cheeky I don't know what to do. Um, what's your Cheeky Freak of the Week, quickly? Just throw that away. Right, well, it's just like, you know, we look at, we look at Cheeky Freaks. Uh, Is this show offensive in any way to some people, do you think? Ding dong. <laughs> 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 got any buns? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the elephant man. Go on. Right, well, it's a bit of a problem for you, this one, Steve, right? I'm chucking it forward to you. Remember the, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week that we were talking about? Uh, that- that illness where people age quicker? Mm. The five-year-old girl that was older than her mum, mm. and he said to you, w w what, if you ran off like you wouldn't serve her fags and beer, and you went, yeah. no, he went, why not? And you went, cos it's a five-year-old. Yeah. Right? He went, oh, she's got enough problems, give her some fags. <laughs> you remember that, <laughs> yeah, don't you? Sure, sure. Yeah, right. So, another dilemma for you. Right, picture this, you're running a restaurant, right, door goes, right, uh, few people, most of them look normal, you notice the woman at the back, <laughs> crawling on all fours, <laughs> uh, top half is woman, right, this is real, yes. this isn't like a comic or anything, this is on, yeah, this is on the internet. Yeah, I've seen it, they're called dog people and her legs just come straight down, they're like little, there's been legs at the back and so they walk on all fours because it's easier. Dog people, right? Yeah. You've Not dog people, they're human beings right. with yeah. deformed back legs, so they walk, it's easier for them to get around like that because they can't, they can't stand up because they can't stabilise and also it comes straight out of their hips. Right. right. So you're running a restaurant, it's a busy night, you haven't really got time for any hassle. She comes in. Uh-huh. Would you serve her? Um, the premise being what? That he doesn't serve dogs? Because the restaurants don't allow animals in. Right! She- Right. Right. So it's a dilemma. It's not a dilemma. Right. She's not a dog. She's a human being. Yeah, with I, put the form some, I put, you know, a plate of meatballs <laughs> on the floor <laughs> and she tucks in. <laughs> and a little glass of, you know, a little bowl of wine <laughs> next to it. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, he turns around, there's the woman older than... Uh, Get mama. away from that plant! <laughs> Uh, uh, service included? Uh, <laughs> oh. oh dear. Okay, so monkey news, please. Alright, alright then. Let's hear the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. <laughs> now, before. before oh, and again, and again. Go on. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Brilliant. Alright? Um, right, before I went away. I told you about Alfred. Um, he was the he was the monkey where there was a, a robbery going on in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I then remember. he nicked the robber's loot and backed out yeah. with a gun. Yeah, he sort of stole. He, he robbed the robber, didn't he? Yeah. Did he take his gun as well? He Did took he the weapons. He took all the weapons. There was like a couple of robbers. He managed because they were so amazed that a monkey was coming in. It was like don't what? talk shite twice. Right. Anyway, so anyway, got a follow up to that. Okay, then what was that, that monkey's name? Um, Alfred. That was Alfred. Um, so anyway, um, because a lot of people wanted to know, well, you know, what did he do? Did he go off and have a holiday? Did he, no, no, no. Right, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so the follow-up is, what happened is, the monkey had the guns, had the cash, which was $250,000. Sure. Right? It went back to the zoo, right? Uh, you, uh, right, Carl, you're talking shit. Well, you, Ricky, oh. I get angry with you when you won't let oh. him finish his monkey news. Right. Can't we just get out of the official Imagine thing? if people were interrupting Trevor McDonald. I don't- It wouldn't happen. I don't want to- I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. No, of course not. Um, no, so, so yeah. check the internet. So, uh, the monkey goes back to the zoo, right, where all the zookeepers come out and go, get him, he's- he's got the guns. Yeah. He hands out a couple of guns to his mates. What? Right. His monkey mates? His monkey mates. So they've all got a couple of guns each. Oh, Carl. Uh, Steve, I can't, <laughs> mate. I cannot Just stand it. Honestly, I want to f scream. Please, I really get annoyed with you. They tried to do him a, do him a deal. They said, how about if- uh, I'm going. Tell him that. I'm right. not going. Now I can't. Step out for a uh, moment. Okay, we'll just do it. Look, don't listen. Step out and I'll paraphrase what, what I hear for you when you come back in. Step out. Now, please. I need to hear, I need to well, hear the end of this. Out, this yeah. is monkey news. This is important stuff. <laughs> Right. Right, Ricky now has left the room, he cannot- he cannot bear to hear, which is surprising to me. Right, so anyway, um, so yeah, they've got the money, and mm. they say to the zookeepers, how about, uh, we give you some cash? Yes. And they go- oh. Sorry, th well, hang on, sorry, the zookeeper said that to the monkeys? Yeah. Right. No, 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 the monkeys who have got the two hundred and fifty thousand pounds- Right. Say to the zookeepers, we'll sort you some money out if you let us go. So right. the monkeys say to the zookeepers, We'll give you some money. Yeah. You don't see any problem with that? Right, listen. Okay. Let, it's nearly finished. <laughs> right, I'm listening out there. You could, this is ridiculous. Go! What do you mean the monkeys say? What do you mean the monkeys say to the zookeeper? They were probably holding the money out, like, kind of going, look, you know, we'll do your deal. Right, okay, come on. Um, and what happened is, I think, uh, I think that, I think they were happy with that. I think they left and that was that. They, they, they wanted to get out of the zoo because they didn't like it in there. There's the thing. Right, I, I don't- uh, Just have a look. Right, Carl, think. Right, how did they get out in the first place, this one? Just let Steve have a- So why did he go- so he went and robbed- he thought- uh, what, he knew there was gonna be a robbery that day, did he? He might have been getting some money before they went to escape and then that happened and they had more money. They might have been withdrawing some stuff out. What do you mean? No- If he was planning on leaving the zoo, he's gonna get his savings. What are you talking about? What have you read there, Steve? I, I've got a, I've got a feeling this is a review of one of the Planet of the Apes films. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I, I'm not certain. It could be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Right. What I mean, Carl, think, think, please think. Right. So this this monkey, right? He leaves the zoo, right? He, so he leaves the zoo, which he can do presumably. What they leave him the keys or what? They're chatting to him. They might as well. He goes to a bank. What, what's he, what's he thinking of doing? Sees a robbery, probably by chance. He probably wasn't tipped off, was he? Or has he got one of those police scanners? Probably got one of those police scanners. Well, I think he was going to the bank to get a mortgage to, uh, build a, a lot, slightly, uh, I think he wanted an extension, didn't he, on his, uh, cage? Think of that. And so, he, th I love the fact that he hands out the guns and they do a deal. <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, you've got the best, you've got the best mind w working on radio today. It's incredible. The only person who makes less sense is Terry Wogan. <laughs>
<laughs> it goes up and down, doesn't I don't it? Know what I about. can't understand his sentences because I don't know. No, it's wh- like freeform poetry. Yeah, it's, I don't know whether it's the end of a sentence in the middle. Is sure like a new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's it, have the jingle again, a record, and then we'll uh, probably have to wrap up the show. I imagine. That was oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news. Well, Mr. Stipe, uh, I am not Kenneth, but I can tell you the frequency was one o four point nine. See you next week. Oh, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me like... Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Do you think that when Marconi invented radio, this was what he had in mind for it? <laughs> yeah, two hours of absolute. And now listen up, right? It's the Sony Awards this Thursday. Now, for those who don't know, the Sony Awards are like the, the Oscars for, for radio uh, presenters and producers and everything, right? So, and as you know, me and Steve, we love to win. We want to win this one. This is the last time the panel will be listening, so I want a good, a good, clean, tight show, okay. right? So no, no swearing, joking aside, no swearing, nothing controversial and, and, uh, nothing in bad taste, all right? Just good well, luck out there. Aren't okay. we a little bit buggered then? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, Carl? Yeah, that's all right. Just, it's just when you say things like, uh, you know, make it a good one. Sometimes it sort of puts a bit of pressure on and things slip out that you shouldn't say and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever had that? What, when you can't- It's like, I'll tell you one, I'll tell you one story, right? I'll tell you a couple, actually. That, on. that one's just come to mind r- right now, right? There was a fella who, um, who my dad was gonna meet. I don't know if I've told you this before, right? But, um, I have told you, when, when it was a party and everyone was saying, Dave's coming, he looks like Ken Dodd. But don't say anything, have I told you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on, what is it again? And, uh, everyone's like, right, oh, and my dad's like, oh, I've never met him, I wonder if he does look like Ken Dodd, and everyone's saying, yeah, but don't say anything. Yeah. Because you'll accidentally, you know, say it and- The unbunctious, you might go, uh, uh, unbunctious yeah. to meet you. So, the thing is, when this fella turns up, he did look like Ken, my dad couldn't believe it, first thing he said, nice to meet you, Ken. Oh, <laughs> no. His name's Dave. <laughs> and that's the sort of thing, there was another one, right? <laughs> Uh, at a station that I worked at in, uh, in Manchester, right, uh, there was this girl who worked in the newsroom, right, and, uh, she had a, a plastic arm, right? Right. And this presenter, nice bloke, he didn't, you know, he's not out to hurt anyone, went up to her, sat down, was chatting for a bit, touched the arm, said, what lovely skin you've got. <laughs> what does she say? I, I, I think, I think, I mean, she's probably used to it. So she wasn't bothered. And then, right, this one, this is brilliant. Um, this is a sort of gaffy made on air, right? <laughs> and like I say, he's a nice bloke, so he meant nothing by it, right? But he does this competition on the air, gets a caller on, right? And uh, he's talking to the woman saying, you know, thanks for calling in and to play, I don't know, what, what have I got in my pocket or whatever they used to play on the show, right? And uh, talking to the woman, in the background there's this noise, right? Like, like that, right? So he's talking, and he goes, uh, have you got a, uh, pet parrot? She said, no, it's my Down Syndrome kid. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Uh, the, th- the thing is, awards don't matter. No, I don't think so. Play record? I don't think so. So, we're not out to offend? Or no. <laughs> Appropriate words there. That's the Smiths and Panic. Don't worry about it, Carl. People know that there's you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. So uh they they, they know it's confusion. Don't worry. No, it did happen. So it's I not. know. I know, yeah. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was um, incredibly annoyed. By Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money like, for old It's money rope. for rope. It That's about, the, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says what do you want to do, try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist, it's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck, cause, yeah. you know, I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well what's the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer, and he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week 
to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why, just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right, I got back off holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail, yeah. right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right, because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in, it was still my day off, I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying, we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right? Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought, right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week I later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they-, they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple of days. But I didn't days. get the message. I got- all I got was, there was a company, I don't remember the name, and they phoned you, they wanted voiceover work. Well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take down a number, you didn't take down a name, nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't no, but listen to that <laughs> voice. Oh, you must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, oh God. I don't know what you. I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> What do I care? What's going no, on? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The I don't care. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They were offering me money. And you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it. They probably made a mistake. I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway. I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get paid. What if that had been a girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, <laughs> yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get your decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to yeah. offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you'd want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve, uh, I'd love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an well, exciting sex me, scene. So has it happened? Has well, it happened? well that's what I'm saying, in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, d I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still all right. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. <laughs> selfish, Carl. So selfish. And you've lost us the same. Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what has happened to Carl? Cause Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his, his ways. You know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's, and now he's coming back like that, having a go at, not, not caring about voiceover work. It's like, cause he have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cause Carl, I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl, doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, you, exactly. You, you've got no comeback. You're still sweet. And to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine. Right. Her voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's, I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that right. doesn't, do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And there. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that right, is what, a rubbish- what, All right, apart from that then, what else have I done that's wound you up? Well, that's, that's, that's a, that's a good starting point, because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock, because that's the first time I've let you down. And I didn't really let you down, because I passed on the message. You didn't- well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying, I deleted a message for you, is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, or people have come up and they said, are you Carl? Because they've seen Ricky. Now, it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just, yeah. you cannot deal with fame, you've not got the intelligence to cope yeah. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming now this kind getting. of ego-driven monster. Now it's monster. getting, now it's getting. No, it's it scares me, Carl. Getting You're not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't even my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, he's got you there. What? 
Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I mean, that, that is arrogance right work. there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, I, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay in for your landlady. Is, is, he talked about it for about the hour when we were working. What are you talking, I, I, last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what you that. You last you week when, that? You had a when you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> why couldn't we do any work then? Because you were at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again! He's hey. done you again, mate! Play a record! How has he done me? What? <laughs> they live in Bristol! <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the joke's on you! He couldn't get him to clean the flat! Ah! <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who, then. Right, listen. <laughs> Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay! Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay! Alright. Okay. Do you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's got topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right. Well, someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to uh, read out the prizes for uh, Busters? We'll get, okay. we'll get that one in. Oh, we're are we not doing, doing Rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, as good I don't know. Better, just... What do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My it point is this, Rick. He was looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I now know. it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rockbusters. He gets to do it. I know, and it's it's awful, but that, that, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? What's the prices? Oh, we got the prices. We've got uh, a brand new XFM, a stylish XFM uh, DJ bag. Which that is, is actually nice. quite nice, actually. Yeah, we've got in there a 12-inch uh, from uh, the XFM remix album. This has got the Cure on there and the Prodigy remixes from them, which is uh, quite handy. We've got a little mm. mouse mat there with the XFM logo on. And here's what everyone's waiting for, the CDs and DVDs. Yeah. Um, once again, the X list. This is the compilation that XFM have put out. It's actually very good. Uh, Smash Hits, The Reunion. Let me see what we've got on there. Aha, obviously, Wham, Duran Duran, all your favourite 80s and 90s classics. Another copy of DVD, uh, Steve Coogan's, Coogan's Run DVD. What else is this here? Low Fidelity All Stars, blah, 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 blah. That's some, there's Voodoo House and Ghost Funk on there, Rick. I'm sure oh, that'd be right up your street. And, uh, also on DVD, Man Is that Child. with or without wrecked train? <laughs> uh, so yeah, not, not a bad little selection there, Carl. You're, yeah, you're you've done, done well, well there. Done well. So go on and do the clues then. Let's do Rockbusters now. Uh, well, I'll, I'll bung a song on. And we'll, we'll, well, yeah. I love the fact that he was taking the piss out of your voice. I'll bung a song on. <laughs> hey, it's Tribe and Cowheel tonight is uh, not as griddling as gravy. <laughs> to be honest, Carl, let's be honest, if Ricky Gervais can get voiceover work, do you know there's I mean? got to be a place for me. Where do you think the place for him is? Well, look, right, you were talking about your face on the poster. <laughs> it's not all bad, because I read something last night that can help you out. <gasps> right? And it's amazing. So we're talking about that. Play record, Carl. Warren Zevon ain't that pretty at all on it, sir. One hundred four point nine. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right, Carl, calm now. The Sony's they're listening. We've got to win this award. We're just bickering, right? What? What's this thing that can help Steve out? What are you talking no, about? No, no, we'll talk about that in a bit. What are we doing now? We'll then? do. We'll do Rockbusters. Get that up and running. Yes, sir. Get the email busy. Thank yeah? you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Go on then. Right. So. You know how it works. Cryptic clues, initials. Well, as I say, I say every week, they're not they're not strictly cryptic. It's more what am I thinking that starts with these letters. Some cryptic a word. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a word? Cryptic? Because <laughs> oh. anyway. Oh God. So last week, uh, one of them was these people from the East Midlands can't help swearing. Yeah, something. Tourette's Trent Darby. Tourette's Trent That's Darby. That's the sort of shite we're dealing with to try and get a Sony. Right, so, uh, here's the clues and that. <laughs> First one. And that. Um, what are we after here? The artist? Yeah. The band name or solo artist? It's, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Right. Go on. Uh, so the first one, the, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, what's the initials? VH. Right. 
The hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah. Right? Second one, don't be selfish, hand some of it out to your mates. Right. The initial there is C, right? Yeah. Don't be selfish, hand some of it out to your mates. Uh, on the I'm third sure that's one, not what is Carl, he's selfish. No. Nope. Begins with C. Right. <laughs> and, and the third one, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. <laughs> right, right, okay. The, the Scottish, Scottish fellas, fellas can't get into their emails. Go on then. Right, the initials there, K-L. Right, so quickly again, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car, VH. Yeah. Don't be selfish, hand some of that out to your mates. Right. C. This is your last chance, Carl. And the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails. If I hear anything like Wet Knee Houston or D Trout Spinners or Tourette's Trent Derby coming out of this, we're never doing it again, okay? Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So, just, just cause breakfast do it and that, and uh, just, just leave it maybe this week, see what happens. See if we need it, see, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know, play a record a minute, Carl. I wanna talk to you, I'll talk to you off air, play a record. What? What's the, what's the, what's the, uh, uh email address again? Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Okay. Right, that's where the email the answer's in. So got to, we've got to remind you who's show it is. Play a record. Right. <laughs> Stop My Head, Ivan Dando, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, and with me, arguing like nutters, are <laughs> Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Okay. Alright? Calm down. Right. Right, let's just chill. Let's okay. just chill. Yeah, right. D what did you do last night, Rick? Uh, I watched I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I tried last week, I knew Tufnell was gonna come through. Mm. I knew he was. I went went to put a bet on and it was eleven to four and I thought, oh that's not worth it. I could have put on four hundred quid and I reckon I'd have won eleven hundred because I reckon he's gonna win. Yeah. So, uh, that is annoying. I suppose if you could go back in time, you'd probably change things. Uh, <laughs> 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 do you know what I'd do if I could go back in time? I'd go back in time and stop Hitler from being born. <laughs> <laughs> but then it might be worse because someone else might have come along and he'd been even better. It's like a novel. <laughs> yeah, you're like right. Ben Alton would write a novel yeah. like that or something, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, our things would be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, popped to the cinema last night and it was a joy of an experience because for what the first time, I wanted to see X Men 2. I enjoyed I it. I want to see that. Yeah, really I saw one. I, I didn't, I don't like that sort of thing. I've never been a comic book, never been a, um, a geek like yourself. Not yourself, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, yeah. you're not a geek in that. In that sense, a different. I mean, not in the traditional sense. No, 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 no. I'm, no. One, I'm one of those sexier geeks. Like yeah, modern sexy geeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and two's meant to be even better. Isn't it? I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good fun. But uh, the, but more so than the film was the fact that the actual cinema experience for the first time in a long time I actually enjoyed because I just Honestly, had such a problem with the cinema. Well, I, I can't go. I have to wait about three weeks that dies down and go in the afternoon. I can't be sat next to people. I I don't know why people go to the cinema to eat. Ha have some before you go in there. Yeah. Rattling, crunching. What? Why? Why is this experience? This this film has cost fifty million pounds. Mm. It's meant to be an emotional, artistic experience. It's not meant to be something that's on while you're chowing down. Yeah. I don't know. Then, but people leave their mobile on. I want when someone answers, you go. I can't talk now. I, mean, I want to go. Don't you smack them on their face with it? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I, uh, I went to, to the cinema a while back to see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah. That art house film. And, um, a woman sat next to me, huge, fat blubber of a woman. But she's, it's up to her, she's earned enough money, she can eat more than she needs. Sure, but don't squeeze into a seat next to me in the cinema, <laughs> right, with your flesh, you know, curving over the armrest that we're having to share, oh, right, God. next to her little we weasel of a husband. She's got one of those huge, kind of, um, hog-sized barrels of popcorn. <laughs> you don't reckon he was one of them feeders? It was very similar. It oh. really was. She's, she's, she, as you say, she's chowing down on the, uh, on the popcorn. She is one of those women who, uh, she's not come out to see a film, she's come out to eat, and if a film happens yeah. to be showing, then she'll watch it. Yeah. Really wounds me up. He's got the hot dog and everything. She's in, and now popcorn already annoys me because and I she don't... goes to him, are you gonna eat that? He goes, well, I was thinking of it. Look at me to me. Look at me now. <laughs> but I don't know why it was that popcorn became the thing you eat in the cinema. It's like you say, you've made these films, and someone's there thinking, well, we've made this great film, we've got the sound mix right, but what we need is something that will just slightly uh, irritate everyone yeah. during uh, the film. And they've seen the, the size. The they've seen the size of the buckets they yeah. go in there popcorn. But and why not serve soup or something or, or yogurt? Oh, the slurping would drive me mad. But and, and the spoon touching the, the bottom of the thing would drive me mad. Don't serve anything. There's no reason you have to do this and go. Oh God, I need to eat. Well, this eat was planet. You don't you don't go and play tennis eating. What you you plan it, don't you? Well, what? exactly, <laughs> exactly. Eat before we come out. Yeah. 
Have a sandwich. Have a cornbread sandwich. Do you know what? Right, what annoyed me is I found out in, in uh, across America when they showed Schindler's List, they banned popcorn, right, yeah. out of respect to the film. What? So they're saying all the other films? Oh, sod it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But well, this one cost hundred million. Ah, it doesn't matter. You can eat popcorn through that. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, ban it through all films. Well, this woman was one of those ones. She may as well have had a trough <laughs> in front of her. <laughs> I mean, she was a state, right? Oh, and she's don't God. Know, she's an idiot as well. Because the trailer comes from, I remember at the time, the trailer came on for AI, that film AI. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailer for it, but it's something like, I don't know exactly, but it's something like, uh, um, Martin is a, uh, six-year-old boy. Yeah, he's, 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 he's 20 kilograms, he's three foot high, yeah. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. he's, 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 but he is, but he is not human. Yeah. He's a robot. Yeah. And she's watching, she just goes, she's just watching that, right? Bear in mind, the point of the trailer, he's a robot. Yeah. She says, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to slap her. I was livid. I went, he's a robot. He's a robot. That's what's important. <laughs> she, she says, uh, a trailer comes <laughs> on for a war film. She goes, I shan't be saying that. She just announces it. I shan't be saying that. And I'm bored with war films. <laughs> bored with them next. Oh, God. Uh, and then, so the, um, the, the title card comes up for Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, like, at the beginning, they yeah. do everything. Yeah. It comes up, Crash and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, she's in the cinema. She goes, what a stupid name for a film. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking, but you paid to see it. <laughs> and, and then oh. it says subtitles in brackets. She goes, oh, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> so it comes on, and I think, I, in, in the film, I think they speak maybe Mandarin or, or Chinese or something. I'm not sure, but, but let's say it's Mandarin. So they come on, they start, and it's all subtitled, and they start speaking in this, uh, in this, uh, Mandarin or, or Chinese. And, uh, she just starts going, I think Cheng Chong, I think Cheng Chong, I think no. Cheng Chong, Chong, in the cinema, just saying that out loud. No. She and her boyfriend are cracking up. They're all weeping with laughter, right? And I'm trying He's to watch He's got a laugh, film. otherwise she bites him. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm actually, I'm so livid, so I really make a show of getting up with all my stuff, I get up and I kind of clamber over some of the seats. Yeah. I sit down next to these two teenage girls with the mobile phone. Oh. God. Mobile phone goes off, and like you say, instead of, I mean, it should have been off anyway. Yeah, of course. But let's say, instead of it being, uh, instead of immediately thinking, oh God, and, and switching it off hurriedly, they take the call in the cinema. I'm in the cinema. Yeah, no, I mean, it's like having a conversation. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you're 16, unless that is your business partner in Hong Kong phoning you, <laughs> saying the deal is not going to go through, which I suspect it's not. I suspect it's probably Gareth or <laughs> Gavin or your boyfriend Tony saying, do you want to do me behind the bike sheds later? <laughs> yeah. I suspect that's who it is. Yeah. Switch off the phone, or very least, get out. I know. Get out of the cinema. But it just, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know where these people were brought up or raised. I don't know who it was that, that told them this was this was this was behaviour that you but could do. I, 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 I really want to have cinema police. Yeah. Right. You go in there, and if the, they, you, if the phone goes off, you get your money back, and you're asked to leave yeah. straight away. Straight away. Any whispering, you go. If you whisper again, you know. Yeah. If you're too stupid to be able to, to figure out what. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, they they tell you what age you should be. Right to get that film. Yeah, that's it. If you listen and you're not eating and you're not talking, then you should be able to get a film. Well, I I was in the cinema last night and as I came in, there was a big queue. And as I came in, there was people there uh, taking a ticket, showing you to your seat. Now, wh when did it happen that I was no longer able to find my own seat at the cinema? Why is it that I'm going in the daytime? I can find my. I'm left to fend for myself. But now it seems that on a Friday night, no. there's so many stupid people out no, there who can't I th find their I decent think that, seat. No, I think that is policing. I think that's to stop people thinking I'll just sit here and having to deal with it themselves. Because, mm. I mean, uh, if someone was in my seat, even if I'd, there was another seat, I'd go, well, no, that's mine. I, mm. I, I, mm. I want lots of, I want lots of policing yeah. in social occasions. I, I want uh, to go into pub and go, that is too loud, that music. Those people are too annoying, they're standing up, they're too annoying. I remember being in the cinema once and seeing a guy, he's a big fat guy again, he had popcorn, the hot dogs, the coke, right, and he had it balanced on this little wall that was, uh, uh, sort of separating parts of the cinema, and he was, you know, he, had, he was a big fat guy, on there, just sat there, I was watching, I think it was Beetlejuice I was watching, right. and, uh, some, uh, some local hard nuts, they were on the same row, they started kicking the little wall to, try to knock, knock his off. food off, and I thought, brilliant. <laughs> oh, no! I think you want to bully fat people. Yeah. Play a record, Carl, it's getting really nasty yeah. now. Can I pick on you? <laughs> 50 Cent, in the club. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing, this time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not- we- I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending, are you are arguing. Yeah, I know, I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? well, that wouldn't have thought so. We just need to- we can talk about it later, sort it out. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm 
I'm not stressed. Though. And he doesn't really understand that, you know. You know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week. He's just got one job. Yeah, but. and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you mm. know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this will annoy you. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his ass, that's so in his ass. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he, look, he looks like Charlie Brown. He's got the same sort of hair arrangement as Charlie Brown. Yeah, he's-, he's I don't like think Charlie was- was balding though, was he? He was only about ten. Well, no, but he just had like a couple of yeah. things on the top and he's- and he's- his hairdo. Carl's had a hairdo that keeps- It's, it's not a hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> no. What is it then? What is it? <laughs> it's- it just happened, I've told you. <laughs> no, no, the hairdo. Noel was in, right, once. Noel who? Uh, Gallagher. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, right, your first name terms. Right. Yeah. And, uh- From the hood, isn't he? And, and whoever was doing the interview said, uh, oh, you know, what, will, will Liam be able to keep up that sort of hard attitude, right? Uh, say when he gets older and he goes bald, and, uh, you know, could he, could he could still carry off the, the sort of attitude that he's got? And he was like, no, no, he'd, he'd never have that style. He couldn't, he couldn't have that style that lad's got in there and pointed at me. Yeah. I said, he's not a style. <laughs> I said, I didn't go to the barbers and say, can you just... Like, shave the top bit, leave the sides. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember the little tuck? That's the way it is. Yeah. Right, and you were just saying to me, what would you do if you- if you went back in time? I'd probably use a better shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I wish we could tape the conversations we have off air. Yeah. Because, I mean, they are ridiculous. <laughs> what would you do if you go back in time? And the other sh stuff we were just talking about is, obviously, can't talk about Can it. Can I just ask though, sorry, wh when did you, when did you start to notice it was disappearing? I mean, at what age did it kick in? Uh, I, I worked a lot. You see, you, you'll, you'll be safe, do you know what I mean? Your hair will stay there, but it's when I used to do a lot of hours, a sure. lot of hours working. <laughs> and yeah, you were stressed and things. Yeah. Stressed yeah. out. Yeah. And it just went Well, I'm beginning to understand that. what stress is like, you know, because I'm not getting messages and stuff like that, but yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. probably about, I don't know, twenty, twenty-four. That's uh -huh. unlucky, isn't it? Something like that. And did you- did you panic or did you- were you just not quite- Not bothered. Not bothered. <laughs> He's not bothered, he wouldn't be bothered. I'm not bothered. <laughs> but I don't think- for someone who doesn't care about going bald or war or SARS or anything, you don't have to get stressed on a Saturday between one and three. <laughs> to be fair, you are worse <laughs> than all those things. <laughs> it, SARS has got nothing on you when you're in the right mood. <laughs> But why- why is it alright for women then to, you know, have a wig? But I couldn't have one if I wanted one. Well, it's not a wig, they get bald treatment. They actually can get- they can get their hair replaced on the National Health, which might be anything, I suppose. Which might be wigs, which might be transplants. I mean, the only- the only cure for baldness is a transplant, which they literally take, um, follicles. They can get it down to individual follicles now, from the back of your neck, and, you know, it takes a long time. And, you know, but, um, but people will know anyway, won't they? I don't know when it starts, though. I don't know when it starts. Like, now if you started wearing a wig, people go, were well, you wearing a wig because you were bald yesterday? Yeah. You can't- you can't start thinking, right, I'm gonna go bald in a year, I'll start wearing a wig now. That's the thing to do, isn't it? It is, really, if you're that bothered, but I wasn't- I, I just thought, right, it's losing it a bit, shave the lot off. But did you know you had that round head underneath it? Did you know it was gonna be that funny, though? You would've- well, you presumably worn a wig, wouldn't you, if you'd have known? Cos I've never seen a head that round. I think the barber, when they did it, right, the woman said, you can pull that off, you've got a good shaped head for, uh, for having it shaved. She, she meant- a good head. Yeah, she looks like a tennis ball. You look like a tennis ball when you haven't shaved. Mm. She said, if you can pull it off, she said, that's- that's like- a good thing to see if someone's good looking. If you- if they can have a bald head, it's like Sinead O'Connor, yeah. right? She can pull it off. There's- there's those sort of things. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, of Alice. No, but that's like one of the things. If- if you look good with a bald head, mm -hmm. that means you're pretty good looking. Yeah, yeah. And if you can wear a, a bicycle helmet and look good, that's <laughs> another thing that, like, you must be pretty good looking <laughs> yeah. to pull yeah. that off. But who- who- who have you seen <laughs> in the bicycle helmet that you think- that you think's good? Who have you seen in the bicycle helmet and thought, oh god, they must be good looking, they're good in the bicycle helmet? 
Well, they everyone looks better in the bicycle helmet. Who? No one looks good, do they, really? It's not so, so what, what do, do, would you say Brad Pitt would look good in the bicycle helmet? Well, I don't know, I'd have to see. But I'm just saying that's that's like one of the two things, really, that's- And what, what blokes do you think look good, bald? Who do you think would look good, bald? Uh, don't know, give me some names and I'll tell you whether they'd be alright if they're bald. George Clooney? Uh, I don't- I, no, I don't think he does. I don't think he would do. Uh, uh, who else? Well, this uh, could run and run. Um, Al Pacino? Uh, yeah, he could probably pull it off. He'd probably look alright. Do you think he looks alright with hair, then? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, well done, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Sony award winning stuff. <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> and then the car going, oh. He's stressed. He's stressed. Wild Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Little bald heady Carl Pilkington. You quite like being bald, don't you? Like no I fuss. Can, like I say, you know. I'll probably s won't age for a bit now. <laughs> won't age for a bit? What do you mean you won't age for a bit? Because I, I already look quite, quite old. I don't think so. Not with, with a hat on, you look really young. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying, so I, I won't, I won't change that much. It's like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I actually don't think, if it's, as long as you shave it, whoosh, straight back, I, c I can't have you on that. Nothing wrong with it. But that kid who had that aging disease, just shave her head. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't age that fast anymore. Do you know what I mean? She so might... this is the five-year-old girl who had an awful disease where- Well, we don't know much about it, to be fair. No, we just know that you fell in love with the title of the programme, the girl that was older than her mum, right? And you were annoyed that people wouldn't serve her fags and alcohol. If she, if she's, if she's, you know, she's living like an eight-year-old, let her have a fag. Doesn't that sum up this show, though, Carl's comment, <laughs> we don't know much about it. <laughs> Yeah. We're still willing to make comments about it, to discuss it in length and possibly make crass jokes, <laughs> even though we're ill-informed as ever. Yeah. Right, well, there's something for you, right? Go on. This is this is what I wanted to tell you about, right? <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah, face transplants. <laughs> <laughs> there's this, uh, there's uh, some kid somewhere, right, who had a bit of a an odd looking face. Right? A bit of a what? Bizarre looking face. Yeah. yeah. And, um... There's a doctor somewhere who said I can sort that out for yeah. you, right? Sure. And basically what they do is they've got to get a face off a dead person. <laughs> right. That's sorry, sorry, just, um, I in this, in, in this documentary you saw, no, did this was... documentary feature, say, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage? <laughs> was it, was it that documentary you saw? All right, listen, you, you see, go on. So, uh, um, okay, no, so you can't get a face of a dead person. Yeah, go no, on. Sorry, sorry to dismiss the idea of face transplants. <laughs> out yeah. of hand. But go, go on. on. So, um, yeah. It's got to be a face of a, of a dead body that isn't older than like four hours old. Right. Four hours dead, whatever. Mm. Um, they can take it off, mm -hmm. fit yeah. it on, fit it on the new face. It makes sense. It's but it's not just it. your face that you lose it, but it's the muscle, it's muscle tissue and, and bones, isn't it, when it's like disfigured? It could be, could be through fire or whatever or disease or whatever. So they can't just literally plonk a face on, they have to do something else, don't they? You're asking Carl, like he's gonna know. <laughs> like he, I forgot then, he looked at I, that, was that in Russian? Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could get, I wish we could get him on telly just to show the look on his face when I said that. Yeah. It, it was, was brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you know when you were, uh, go to a cat, hey, we want some food then? And he just looks at you, yeah. and he goes, it's almost like he can understand what we're saying. Mm. Go on. It's like if you had been caught holding a mallet over a dead body <laughs> by the police. <laughs> what, I'm saying, is, blankly, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they, it would sort of work, yeah. If you took, if you peeled your face off mm. and put my face on it, that, oh my god, why don't you and Steve for an experiment swap faces? And, and the great see, thing is, I wouldn't age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you do that if, if I could, if it was safe? Uh, I, I think I'm getting the rough deal here, though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, no, you would, you'd get some money back, it'd be part exchange. I mean, it would, you know, it's like you'd, you'd make up the difference just to wear your brilliant face for but, a week. But the doctor was saying how, um, it's not complicated. He said the worst thing is something about, uh, the people who were related to the dead person. It's a bit weird for them still seeing the face of someone they know walking about when they're sure. dead. Yeah, I can see yeah. that would be old, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Carl. 
<laughs> you are brilliant. <laughs> Honestly, you're never a dull moment. What, what it it do doesn't matter whether you're talking or I'm squeezing your head. It's, uh, it's, I'm never bored. I never go, oh, that's enough, Carl. Do you know what I mean? I never, I used, I got battling tops, I got bored. It's like computer games, you think it's the best game in the world, and someone goes, how you getting on with Tomb Raider? You go, oh, I don't play it anymore. I go, how's Carl? I go, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I was squeezing it yesterday, I was squeaking in his face, I got him down to the ground. He said this, he said that, I'm never bored with you. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz with night. With the scale <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <laughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team, sure. and oh, suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again! Right? Yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe uh, it. I love the fact you can insult me but never insult my parents. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Feeder, Butt Rogers. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Blake. Carl, Carl just said to me, said, what face would you have to me? And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, whose face would you have? And I went, I don't know, uh, a, a boy's, so, uh, the skin would be regenerated, he went, oh, no, I'd be a bit weird, he said, oh no, someone famous. And I went, oh, I don't know, I went, whose would you have? He went, Barry Sheen. <laughs> no, but what I meant was, when I was talking <laughs> to Suzanne- Barry Sheen? When I was talking to Suzanne about it, yeah. saying this is amazing, she said, well, whose face would you have? Right. Now, it's gotta be fairly recent to have the skin fresh, cause it can't be too old. Right. So I had a choice of, like, Barry Sheen, yeah. or, uh, what's her face, or Flask of the Summer Wine. Who? Uh, who's the old woman who just passed away? Thor Heard. Thor Heard. <laughs> so that's what I meant, if I could have any face, cause she said, well, you could have had Tom Cruise or something. <laughs> mm. I said, well, he's not dead. <laughs> So no, but you could have had that. You, you give yourself restrictions in your fantasy. So sort of like, look down the picture. I love the idea that someone getting you a call. Uh, Mr. Wilberton, uh, hello, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away and you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or... Do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> I love the fact that- I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, well, she, you. She was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh, you know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be good. Yeah, but then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. Yeah. But if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like- People were looking you at you something. on the tube. Well, no, like, say if the people who made Mission Impossible said, well, what, I'll do a third one. <coughs> would I then, would I be in my right to say, well, I don't want to do it? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what I love thinking. the idea of this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get offered a film! But why, go, why does she have conversations like this with you? There's no on last night. There's no on the telly. I the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, was the, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew it on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid. I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cause the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> Come on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It, this is going, <laughs> this is going crazy, you know, Carl. I don't know, you, you're just, the insults are flying left, right and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy, you've just gone wild. You're spawning around just cause you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's cause he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're- Co A couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's scared of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No, well, yeah. Cause Christian wants to do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Once around the block, badly drawn boy. I like him. He's funny as well. You know what? I think he looks like if me and you were put in a blender, Carl. Do you know what I mean? He's he's sort of he's got my sort of shape. He's got your sort of accent and. 
I think that. when you put in a blender, does that <laughs> would a voice sort of mix? <laughs> the times I thought of putting the two of you in a blender. Do you remember? I, I told you that thing about the sponges, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, that freaked him out. You know, if you get uh, two sponges and uh, you dye one red and one blue and you liquidise them, we pour them into a tank of water. After a couple of hours, there's a blue sponge and a red sponge because their cells know well, they, and they they reform. And do you know what he said? He went, oh, "How'd you kill a sponge then?" <laughs> 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 yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, what right. a great thing to say! <laughs> oh, my back's killing me because I, I I went um. You know, I, I did my back in last week and I had to get a chiropractor out and I couldn't walk. Well, as soon as I could walk, I mean, I came in here on my day off and did a, when you were in Bristol with your mum and dad looking mm. after you. Um, and, uh, and then I went to Selfridges Sunday and- Well, you got a bit of money now, why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, I went into the sports department and, uh, there's a golf simulator there. Thirty-eight thousand pounds, oh. and it's just like a shed. And I was looking at it like a kid in a sweet shop. And the two blokes that work there, uh, uh, they recognised me. Went, oh, I do. I said, yeah, good. I mean, I was just looking at that, that simulator. It's brilliant, isn't it? He went, do you want to have a go? And I went, no, I'm crap. I can't do it. I said, oh, and I got a bad back. And I went, I went, you have a go. And he did it. And a couple of times he went, oh, that's not bad. And he went, do you want to go? I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> and and I put the water and I really tried my hardest. Of course you did. And it took off, and it was really good shot. And he went, good. I went, I went well. I said, oh, I'll go. And I was thinking, I've got to hit this one as well, I've got to hit this one too. And I hit it again, I had three goes. I hurt my back after the first one. <laughs> but you carried and, on. And it went, right, I said, cheers, thanks very much, and I walked away. <laughs> and I went to Jane, I went, I've got to get a cab. She went, oh, I've done my back. She went, well, why did you show off? I went, I had to. Of course you did. That sums you up. That just <laughs> I was in agony. I was all the way back, I was, I had to lay on the floor and put ice on my back again for about three hours. What Good. was the best you <laughs> thought could happen? <laughs> That they would just say, oh my god, that guy, <laughs> that's Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't do? <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. As I, as I was, I was seeing that, I go, cheers, yeah. As I got about a few yards away, I just slowed down and I, and Jane go, what are you waiting for? I go, listen. Yeah. And it did this go, that man. Is a god. Yeah. And I go, come on, Jane, let's go home. <laughs> yeah. That's You've just it. all. Uh, have you ever <laughs> been able to walk through a fairground, pass one of those machines, those test your strength machines, yeah. and not have a go at it? Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be very good at that. I bet you cannot walk past one of those rifle ranges and not have a go. I love, I love rifle but ranges. But you've got to be the best, I imagine. Yeah, if someone had just won before me, I'd go, it's not worth it, it's fixed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Pathetic. Yeah, so that's why my back's good. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But I also, I don't, I hate not being able to do stuff. It's like I'm punishing the injury. Yeah. I know yeah. if I laid in bed for it, it'd be better, but I go, no, why should I? Yeah. I've used to, I used to, when I used to work kid, I used to hit my head on the banister or something, and I used to go and get a hammer and hit the banister. <laughs> and then I started thinking, um, uh, <laughs> when I was about eight, I remember if I'd hurt myself, I'd go, ha ha, God, didn't hurt. <laughs> 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 He's up there thinking, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> How mental is that? <laughs> Carl, what are you thinking, mate? Alright, rock busters, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Straight to it! Straight to it, go on then, who's the winner? Right, oh, go, go on, on, do the clues again. Right, the first one was, uh, the hitchhiker needs a lift, but in something bigger than a car. Yeah, snappy, go on. VH. Yeah. Right, that was Van Halen. Van Halen, Halen a van. Cos he wanted something bigger than a car, that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. Uh, All the tenses one. are mixed up, <laughs> everything, it's just, we could uh, go on. Second one, don't be selfish, uh, and some of that out to your mates, that was C, that was Cher. Alright. It's alright. Yep. And the third one, uh, the Scottish fellas can't get into their emails, the initials there, KL, they, uh, Kenny Loggins. Right. <laughs> Right, that's, that's the last time we do blockbusters. That no. is the last time we do it. No, no, it is. Who's that's the, the last time. It's, it, give it, give it, give the prize to someone. Kenny Loggins. Uh, I'm going to give that one Kenny to Kenny uh, Loggins. Helen Perrett. She uh, has emailed in, and uh, actually, Helen, I need you to uh, email in your address if you would, so we can send you those uh, goodies, DVDs in the bag and stuff. 
clue. But who would get Kenny Loggins then? If the, if the clue was good, who would get Kenny Loggins? And what did he do? Footloose? Yeah. That famous <laughs> film about that, where, right? where dancing was banned. Yeah. In that nebulous, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's an extraordinary film. I saw it once in America. <laughs> like you say, Kevin Bacon in a town where dancing has been banned. I was watching it. It was like if aliens had been watching Earth, but only monitoring us through our TV and, and films. Yeah. And then tried to make a film about humans. That's the film they'd end up with. What do you think, uh, what do they think, uh, they think of, uh, Queen the Musical? Cause they're, of course, <laughs> rock and roll's banned, <laughs> isn't it? In the future. That's- I'm not looking forward to the future, Rick, where feelings and emotions are gonna be banned. I, I can't believe it. Where's our hoverboards? Yeah. Um, so yeah, well done to, uh, to Helen Perry. Is that the last time we do Rockbusters? No. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, time. after the break, monkey news. No, we'll, we'll play, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do a break. Don't know about monkey news, got some other stuff as well. We'll do monkey news after oh, the break. So, yeah, <laughs> Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that is brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news! <laughs> it always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Once yeah. more, please. Well, Carl. Do you reckon you could sort out- do, do other people have real jingles with their name on it and, and don't have to say who's in the room and what's happening and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. For Monkey News that he does. Why is Christian doing Monkey News? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't, I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough Monkey News to go around. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, hold on though, I don't want cast-offs. I, I thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but wait, new? Wait, wait, Come wait, on, wait. what's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week, he's doing like the, you know, the news at ten type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday, we're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman monkey news night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you can very much right? get behind the monkey news, it's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own speed. You're behind the, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So, are we, so, but ours is called monkey news anyway. It's sort of generic term, like the news, but ours is called chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's, he's seen a bit of monkey news in it. Uh -huh. So, are we doing it or not? Well, I, I, I've got no reason I, I, to stop I, I, doing I, monkey I, news. I, I, it, um, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I we know, not, I Should we not do that? I said that David Attenborough did monkey news before all of us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm missing no, out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, a, I'm well, I'm saying I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My point is this. There's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, monkey news in the week. They're perhaps, they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend <laughs> with Carl Pilkington. So right. that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh! Chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, uh, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Is this monkey? Right. Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. Right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know. I didn't say all internet, that. Probably, internet, probably. Internet. I'm sure. Chat names on the internet. I'm sure. <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right? This, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time. They share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, he starts getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean... You mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella doing his job and he's thinking, I can do this. All right, the monkey. <laughs> okay. I love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff. Yeah. So the train sort of come in on the right lines. Sure, 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 yeah. He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the trains coming and that. I have British rider listening. Yeah. All right. Uh, in the end. Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company, happy with that. I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best <laughs> monkey for the job. <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right. Once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point 
did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman? It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before like before trains, probably. Well, it's, uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels, they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation <laughs> of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, for this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday. <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> no. Oh dear, he's not allowed to drink, are ya? Someone emailed in actually and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> <laughs> they would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. Never. He always, he always has some um, t-shirts right done up and long sleeves. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with what's wrong with that? You're a, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why you, your, your IQ is sort of about eighty. I think you might be. You I, I don't mean uh, there was any. I think it was a genetic sort of sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. That's mine. Cherry breaks. Average man on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly another show over, Carl. You know, I've got a squeaky chair there. Why don't you sort that out? Have it oiled? What do you, what do, you do in the week? Do you know what I mean? Can I just, um, nominate a woman that annoyed me today? Go on. Uh, on the tube. I got off at Piccadilly Circus. Um, the sign says, Mind the Gap. Big sign saying, Mind the Gap. Voice on the, uh, tannoy says, Mind the Gap. Woman steps over the gap, goes, Oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I was living. I was just annoyed. I wanted to slap her. There's always one in there every day. Well, just, uh, so, so as you walk down the street, I just feel like I want to squat certain people out the way. Well, squat them out the way. We like went. A... We went into this uh, uh, little restaurant. Me and go to uh, me and Carl. Was it Thursday? And we're sitting down there, and um, it's busy outside. And we were going to get the back. She went. That's no smoking. I went. Yeah, we're not going to smoke. So we sit there right at the back. Right? We get there. and There's just another. There's two women. That right. And I'm sitting there, and they light up a fag. And I go to Carl. It meant to be no smoking. He went, yeah, so what? I went, well, it's the principle. The rules are there. He goes, he goes, rules? You say twat, muff, and shit on air. Never mind rules. I went, well, they've annoyed me now, right? Yeah. So the waitress comes over and he's put there, he goes, oh, God, he puts his head down. Well. I said, uh, I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like this. I went, um, I thought it was just no smoking. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. <laughs> she went, it is, yeah. And I went, right, okay, well, they're smoking. She went, she went, oh, well, you'd have to move then. I went, what? She went, do you want to smoke? I said, no, I don't want to smoke. I, don't, I said, they're smoking over there, right? Try not to, you know. And she went, oh, well, I told you. I said, no, I don't want to smoke. They're smoking. <laughs> she went, oh, right. And I got, I got a move, didn't I? See, that's what a little <laughs> snitch. Yeah. But it annoyed me. Do you worry, though, that, that someone's <laughs> gonna look around and go, it's that Ricky Gervais off the telly? Yeah, well, I can't complain now. I said, if I go in, I get bad service, I can't complain, because I think, oh, look at him, he thinks he can complain. So I have to do it, I have to do it, um, secretly. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, uh, oh, there was, uh, oh, God. Right. People come up to me, they recognise me, and they all give autographs, and I, I don't mind it at all. I don't know, I never know what to say, and I'm always, you know, I say, thank you very much, I say, love the show, whatever, whatever, I say, of course, and, and that's great, and they're polite. And I was in the pub the other day, uh, and I was just with Johnny, and, um, people have been coming up, they go, do you mind if I said, no worries at all, yeah, it's absolutely fine, right? And, um, and then this group came in, about eight, twenty-somethings, right? And they're, they're a bit pissed up. And this woman comes up to me, right, and she goes, she stands there, she goes, ah, right, we like you in our house, right, but you're not as good as Paul Calf. And I went, oh yeah, Steve Coogan, I said, he's brilliant, isn't he? She went, yeah, yeah, you're not as good as him. I went, oh, well. You know, it's not bad to come second to, is it? And then, because I did that, she went, she went, ah, oh, no, you're, you know, really, yeah, you're great. Like, I've just done my dissertation. I went, all oh, right, well, it's in nursing. She went, yeah. She went, ah, oh, right. Anyway, she went, ah, oh, can I have a hug? And I went, well, she went, can I have a kiss? I went, well, not really, no. And then this woman who wanted to take a photo, she went, oh, you were so nice on the BAFTAs. I went, well, I am being nice. I just, I'd rather, I, you know, I don't know you. And I, I was, oh god, it was embarrassing, right? And then, um. So I took a picture, right? And then she goes, anyway, and they sort of dragged her away, and they sort of dragged her away. And then, I, uh, I was going, oh god, 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 I've got to go now, because they're over there. I said, I can't, I can't stand it, I don't mind. And, uh, she came, and she, she came over and she went, Ricky, and she sat down, and I went, I'm going. 
Uh, and I just, I had to go. And then J I was with Johnny and Johnny went, oh god, I've left my bag there. So we had to go back to the bag. She's going through the bag. Oh. She, she, and she went to me, you bastard! I'll never effing watch you again! I thought, well, alright. I don't know what to say, yeah. really. Nice of her to clean up her bad language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she Family knew. pub. <laughs> I know, she No, knew. I just, I got no time for it. I just think it's, I know. it's out of order. You know, I, d I mean, this, this whole sort of notion that, that it's, if you're a celebrity, you're public property. I don't, I just, I discount it. They go, people, you know, what, you hear people say, oh, it's me who put you where you are today. And I think, well, yeah. Thanks for watching, but but we made the show and everything. I we, know. Put it, we put it on the TV. It's not like if you get a plumber around, he does his job and work for you. you don't go in his house and hassle. Or, or it's not. I don't seek it. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't phone up the. But you know what I mean? I don't try and get on the telly or anything. And uh, I refuse to. I don't go to showbiz parties, but I refuse not to go to the pub with my mate. And I just <laughs> seek out. There's fewer and fewer pubs. And I just go to the the quietest. You know, one old bloke and a dog. And it's sort of like. But most people are really. I love brilliant. it, honestly. Honestly, but, people but, come out and they're polite, and I, I but chat. Drunk say, I love people, the show. It's like it's alcohol. It's alcohol. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's just oh god. They mutate into something. You know, and different. they just yeah, they, they don't understand. Yeah, of course, they don't. You know, they're not, they're but to me, it's really. the same people who who who, who be bad, behave badly in the cinema. It's just this breed of person. It just, it just. I mean, I know. Can I put them in room one hundred and one? Let's do that next week, shall we? What are we all having a moan? Yeah, go on. Tell you who's annoyed me this week. Go, go on. on. If we're making a little feature. Go on. David Blunkett. What's Blunkett been up to? He's uh, was reading yesterday. His, his dog has been- he's not- his dog's not been round your house again. No. Causing trouble outside. He's put a stop to people having sex outdoors. What's- what do you mean? What's up with that? <laughs> if he had sight, would he have stopped it? <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>